Welcome back to ESA Winter 2021. We are raising money for Alzheimer Fondin. Links to donate can be found below the stream. We would also like to thank Koei Tecmo Europe, Neo2 The Complete Edition, Twitch, and ViewSonic for sponsoring this event. Now, it's time for Kyo's Little Monster running Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition. Take it away. Hi, friends. It's time. I hope everyone wants to go on a road trip. Uh... I am Kios. You may have seen me run this game uh, pretty much everywhere at this point. Uh, <laughs> I am joined on commentary tonight by Alfina, and uh, oh. we were supposed to be joined by our friend Barbados Double Zero. Uh, sadly, Barbie has been affected by the winter snowstorm in the U.S. and Texas and is currently without power, hopefully staying warm and safe. Alfina, if you want to introduce yourself, feel free. Just talk over me whenever. Okay. Uh, my name is Alfina. I run the regular edition of this game, and we'll get into some of the differences of the two later. Um, but I've been commentating pretty much every single run Kios does for every single thing. So I have a lot of random things I can share with you guys today. Cool, cool. Uh, if you want to follow along at home, I posted bingo cards, uh, and I'm going to find a way to tie that into my final donation at the end of the run. Um, those are available on my Twitter. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm ready to go if everyone else is. I can uh, shoot a countdown. Mellow, you ready? Ready as always. All right. And three, two, one, go. So this is Final Fantasy 15. It is coming up on its fifth year of release. We are playing the Royal Edition, which uh, was a release that coincided with its movement to PC. Uh, so you will see a revamped final chapter. Uh, you will also see access to a couple of different weapons that are technically DLC items, but for leaderboard's sake, we made this category on console uh, equivalent to what it is on PC, so there's no like real differentiation of the two. Um, but yeah, strap in. This is going to be four and a half hours. Well, it should be under four and a half hours. I've actually knocked my PB down three minutes this week. Um, but we are going to start with a short introduction to the boys, uh, and this thing that's on fire. It's pretty pretty. Um, Alfina, take it away if you have anything to add. I mean, it's one of those beautiful story uh, storytelling methods where we're going to start at the end and get back here later. Like a Guy Ritchie film. I know. Um, I don't know, I love this scene. I, I, I actually watch it every time we restart. <laughs> I'm probably like the only person that pays attention to this scene every time you restart. You can tell if I'm paying attention or not, because I'll do the, the, uh, quickly before he strikes again. Um, but yeah, ooh, I'm going to have to mute the game audio really quick after this, uh, just so everyone else's VODs don't get muted. Um, it's a wonderful song. I can sing it if you want. I can not sing it if you want. Um, <laughs> How much to donate for not sing? Dude, I got like $3 in my Prompto pants the last time I wore them, so. Oh. Uh, so basically, now that we're actually at the beginning of the game, um, the cutscenes that we skipped said that, hey, um, you need to, to go here and uh, get married, and, you know, magically, uh, you run out of gas. All right, they want me to sing. Fine, I'll sing. It, it, trust me, my singing will not trigger a strike on the VOD. Trust me. <laughs> Get some tea down there. <laughs> Do not sing. Well, make up your mind. I think now we're singing, so let's go. All right. And the land is dark and the moon is the only Light we see. That's about all I have for it. Um, anyway, this is the <laughs> intro to Final Fantasy 15. Uh, I will leave uh, the, the, a couple of thoughts in your head as we go through this. One of the first screens that you get when you load this game up is this is a Final Fantasy for uh, fans and first timers alike. Um, so there are definitely moments where the game will kind of take you a little by the hand. Be like, hey, this might be your first time. Welcome to like how Final Fantasy works. 
Uh, but you will see a lot of throwbacks, a lot of references, uh, and stuff that people that have played more than like this was not their first Final Fantasy will feel very, very familiar with it. Um, it is maybe not my favorite game, but it's definitely up there. It has its merits. If you haven't played this game since like day one, uh, I'd recommend coming back and playing it. They patched it. They made it a lot quicker, uh, a lot more fun. And uh, there's there's less of that kind of I feel lost in a very open world feel. And the Royal Edition is extremely worth it because it adds a lot of, of depth to certain parts of the story. Hey, I remember to turn the game audio back on. Instead of like the last marathon, I did it with no game audio for like an hour. <sighs> Was it an hour? Yeah, about an hour. No, oh, game. yeah. I just, kept, how talking. Much I I just kept talking. No one noticed. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, uh, we're we got to <laughs> go ahead. We got to a garage. They're gonna fix up our car. Um, but it turns out it costs money, and we're a prince who's broke. So, it's time to go make some money. Papa said there'd be days like this. I'm just gonna over jump this guy, apparently. Let's just get this right out of the way. There's there's our one silly mistake of the run. All right, you're out. You're done. No more silly mistakes. <laughs> yep. The joys of having the interact and jump button on the same button. Yeah. Um, that's my biggest complaint with this game overall is the fact that I'll go to pick something up and I just jump on it and it's like, no, pick up. Pick. Okay. We're strapped for cash. Any way we could earn a little? Old man's got his anyway, we're gonna start a uh, we're gonna start a trend when it comes to the forced interactions we have. I'll touch on that in a little bit, but first menu of the game. Easy breezy. Oh, so crisp. Feels good to get the first one out of the way with no mistakes. Um, but there is a kind of trend that you'll see. Um, I guess I'll explain the rules early, and I'll probably continue to explain them. Being a jerk makes us faster and gives us what we want. So mm -hmm. I guess it's kind of like any percent in the real world. If you're a jerk, no one's really going to want to talk to you and hang around. So we'll just leave a lot quicker. So you're um, going to notice uh, yep. Kios climbs this big rock and grabs an item. One of There's a Mega Lux up there. It's a great item. And it's just hiding out right there at the beginning of the game. Very clean first start. Yeah. Excellent work. On we go. The almost Power Ranger suit. Yeah, I guess that'll probably be the first question. Um, so the Magitek exosuit was added in patch 1.13. Uh, it was uh, supposed to be kind of like a, a paid DLC thing. Um, but whether coincidentally or not, it actually really looked close to one of the Super Sentai suits, and they were basically planning on releasing a movie around the same time. So Square Enix got a little uh, cease and desist letter from, I forget who owns the rights for Super Sentai, and they're like, hey, can you maybe not do that and we won't sue you? Uh, so Square Enix at the last minute changed the design around and uh, released it for free. It is a, it was like I said, it's supposed to be a DLC item. What it does is while in combat, you have 20 minutes of invulnerability and more importantly, uh, you become uninterruptible, um, which is actually not as handy as you think it is. Like people are like, oh, the invulnerability, that must be the reason. Not really. Uh, dying in this game is pretty difficult, especially for most runners at this level. Um, What's important is consistency, though. I, I would much rather get through this area consistently at roughly the same time as opposed to Sabin, thank you, um, much more consistently than opposed to having a really, really good time and getting to the next area that we have and having to reset because I lost 20 seconds because I got pinned. Um, it is very handy, but like I mentioned, we only have 20 minutes of it uh, like in combat. You say, oh, you're going to have to worry about that. No, nah, don't worry. I'll still have like five minutes left by the time we're done unless stuff goes really, really sideways. Um, but yeah, Alfina, you want to bring us up to speed on the story? Well, so like I said, we were a prince that is uh, broke. 
So they, we went and uh, we're told that if we go and hunt these things that we can get paid and um, we just got a call that there's this guy named Dave and we don't, we haven't heard from him and we're kind of concerned and uh, we should go find Dave. So we're, yeah, we're now searching for, for Dave. Shed fight. All right. Four hit on that. I Bad damage hate rolls. The shed nice, fight. nice crit. I'm just basically, I like to put myself in the back corner and really work my way forward and try and have the last kill be headed out the right direction. That didn't really work out, but it eh, should be okay. I don't, I don't have a timer up, so I'm just assuming I'm probably like 853, 854. Not, not too many big issues along the way. Um, we're coming up to our first skip though. That's a little bit of an issue. Um, I'll explain about Ragnarok after we get through this. There's a little bit of tech coming up. Um, the skips in this game are rather weird. Half of the skips in this game, basically, if nothing happens, you skipped it. Congrats. Yep. Um, but this is Dave, right? Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of the damage uh, via what was a DLC weapon, Ragnarok. Uh, it's, its normal base damage is pretty okay. Uh, but it really excels when it comes to Warp Strike damage. It does a massive amount. It's great. People think it's a great way to cheese it, but it is insanely sensitive to differentiation on the Z-axis. So if you're not like in a very, very straight line with whatever you're targeting, there's like a pretty high chance you'll actually just land right next to it, not doing any damage. Uh, so there's a lot of split second decisions that I have to make and kind of read enemy movement along the way. Do another menu here. I'm going to get rid of this suit. I, and I think I want to look a little bit fancier. Are you going to look cute? I'm going to get dressed up. I am going to see my wife. So I should go oh, do yes, that. Oh, yes, it's very important. We are going to go. Yeah. Get ready for our wedding and all that. I have money on me failing this. Just, just feeling it. There's nope, a skip we're good. here. <laughs> yep. Yes, boys. So there's a skip here. Um, normally, if you're playing through the game, you'll have Iggy stop you and uh, tell you that, hey, maybe you should consider going to bed, even though it's like not even noon. Um, yeah, it's 11 o'clock right now. Yeah, but uh, most people aren't going to be speeding through this game. So probably when you get here, it's actually usually kind of closer to the evening and no big deal. But we don't want to have the conversation where we tell him no because it takes up time. And so if you get him caught on something as you go around, it actually keeps him from starting the conversation. There, there is a, an old way we used to do the skip, but it's about 10 seconds slower. Uh, I'm going to pull off some weird tech here. That looked good. Out of the corner of my eye looked great. And stay. And not in the fire, this is free. Excellent. Uh, so Noctis, uh, who has also appeared in games such as Tekken 7, I believe, uh, is known for his engine blade, uh, which is the sword which has like an engine on it. Some pretty cool stuff involved with it. One of the properties that it has in game, and Prompto's absolutely torched, um, is that it can pull a, a magical energy from uh, enemies that you defeat. So believe it or not, that enemy that we just took down, the dual horn, the blood horn, has very, very, very important 16 electrical or 16 thunder or lightning, electrical magic, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that is <laughs> Ignis. <laughs> Some of the facial expressions in this game are absolutely perfect. So quick touch on the the reason that everybody's kind of um quite singed at the moment is as you saw we did throw out a fire magic the the magic in this game does have friendly fires so when you throw it out you can hit yourself and or your uh party yeah let's do it and so when you do so it, it shows visual effects on them like them being singed also yes i am not a real life cat boy elon musk failed me Sorry to disappoint everybody. Oh, and before I... Also, Cindy's going to ask us if we can do her a favor. Uh, being who I am, I'm just going to say no. And she's going to be like, that's okay. I put it in the trunk anyway. She doesn't really tell us what it is. I'm pretty sure it's something illegal. And that's not cool, Cindy. 
there should be a motel like like who does that older. who just who's just like hey alfina can you do me a favor Grandpa no oh friend. too bad i already put it in your car don't take a look at it just drop it off at this random hotel along the way the, the cops pull you over i don't know you <laughs> And I needn't remind you to exercise. And I, I just just finally, as we've as I've been really working to to decrease the time that this run takes, I get to eliminate everyone's favorite complaint about this game. It's a driving simulator. Well, guess what? It's not a driving simulator anymore because we spend any time we are in the car and in direct control of it, I am now manually driving. Um You'd be like, well, Kios, what's the point? Well, I'm a big Formula One fan. That one's on the bingo card. Uh, and a big racing fan in general. Getting into this game, I, for the longest time, was pretty sure, because if you look closely, the car goes the same speed no matter what. I'm, I'm holding all sorts of inputs, and it, it's not going faster than it's, you know, set speed. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're gonna do it. Uh, time loss. Ew. Um, that's unfortunate. So I'm about two seconds behind where I should be on a good run. So that puts us about five seconds. We still this still has a chance to be a sub twenty nine chapter one with photos. Anyway, um, there was a Japanese runner, Hawk Snow, who initially got the idea planted in my head, as there is one very long and slow turn in chapter three. And he started taking the inside uh, inside line on it. Wow, our money is bad. Um, and we realized it saved about four to five seconds for just the turn. Like, wow, that's really cool. Since then, I have started finding ways to uh, change the menus and make them fit. Oh, I missed that by one input. Nice. Um, and know. manually driving the car like we do racks up a time save of about 45 seconds over the entire run as opposed to just letting Ignis drive the car how he normally would. It is literally free. The only thing we lose is downtime, basically. Uh, and for me, that's really okay. It's, it's the same driving mechanics. It's just like I have it while you're in auto mode, you can still control the car. And basically, you just follow the simple rule of racing. You want to hit the apex as tight as you can accelerate out of the turn. Um, but because we literally can't accelerate, it's basically just take the shortest path possible. Uh, this was also aided by my year and a half sojourn into near automata speed running, where I learned a lot about movement tech. It was a very painful journey. That is a drop. Dropped input three times in a row. And I'm going to finish up my menuing here. Yes, the car has a store in it. Uh, it's very strange. Um, part of Noxus's magical powers is he has the ability to just kind of store things. He's kind of like his own inventory chest. Um, but the menu, uh, what we did is I sold off pretty much everything we're not going to use in the run. I bought 98 sheep's milk, um, which we'll use for making magic. When when we do that, I'll probably either I'll, I'll probably have Alfina explain it, uh, just because there's a there's a lot of moving parts to that one. Um, I also bought two choco beans and two sweet peppers, which we'll be using for pretty much all of the food for the entire run. And uh, the food is the best. Mm -hmm. So, should be coming up on the pullover, shouldn't we? Uh, yeah, we're we're gonna be coming up to the boat soon here. Um, actually, you know what? Ah, hmm. uh, I'm tired. Just gonna take a break. Yeah, I'm just gonna take a break. Seems good. Take a break. Safety save. Get in, get a safety save real quick. Good chance to check for some photos, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, good roll on uh, Guys, donate. You can help decide which of these photos we're taking to the to the end. Let's call it a day. I'll see what I can whip up. Don't mash through it. Don't mash through Don't it. Don't mash through it. Don't 
smash through it. There's Gladio <laughs> hammering a stake into literally sheer bedrock cliff face. Don't ask me how. Dude is big time strong. Anyway, we're going to have some very, very gourmet flame broiled toast. Super tasty. Super tasty. It looks really good. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, two. Cindy. Gladio. Ignis. Do I have Prompto? Prompto's at the car. Damn. This good. Is a really good shot. <laughs> I made sure I got. <sighs> Peaceful out here. Dark yeah. Quiet reveals so All right. You ready to get back on the road? <sighs> Sounds good. I guess nice I'll also explain. I can I can take the take the last couple of seconds we have here to also explain a few things. Uh, you're gonna see me manually parking here and there as well, literally forcing your party out of the car is faster than having Ignis park anywhere because he's one of those people who backs into the parking spot. Like it's cool the first couple of times you're like, man, that's really cool because that probably was tough to code. And then after your third run, you're like, wow, this really loses time. I forgot to move my phone. Sorry about that. Um, in this game, you have the ability to warp to one of two places. Uh, you can warp to the last place you rested or back to the car, provided you have either of those things. That's definitely not foreshadowing at all. Um, we will abuse this fact very, very, very maliciously multiple times, sometimes multiple times per chapter. I've already, I've already used it two or three times. Um, but to me, it's a great quality of life feature. Like if you're one of those people that loves exploring open open worlds like I am, casually, I never really used it. Speedrun, I absolutely rely on it. I used it, I think, casually because I was low on some items, so it was a mm -hmm. quick way to get to a shop. Yep, absolutely. I'm gonna manually park here as well. Anyway, we are now headed to Golden Key, uh, which is a beautiful place. Uh, it's got to be modeled after something real. The the this game has a lot of. I don't want to say completely control C control V, uh, but let's go with the term very heavily influenced by. Uh, we'll be visiting Venice, uh, what looks like the streets of Barcelona, and uh, also the Diet Building in Tokyo. Uh, remind me to grab that on the way back. It's not much, but 25 gil at this point. I'm yeah, minus, you're behind. I'm minus 320 gil, so that puts me eight elixirs, which is a little low. We're going to have a cutscene here where we're going to meet some dude who flips a coin at us, and Gladio, all buff and strong, reaches out and grabs it, uh, obviously protecting me. He protect and attack. He also has the sickest flow I've seen outside of the NHL. Give it up for that sweet, sweet mullet. Our mullet, our mullet's still popular. Uh, I know, like they were popular no. in Australia, but I know they, they're like they kind really of out of fashion be. here. Oh no, losing a time, losing a fraction of a second drinking tea. Anyway, we're gonna meet my boy Dino. Dino might be Italian. He might be from Boston. He might be from New York or New Jersey. We don't really know, but he's got this weird accent, and what he's gonna do is definitely is illegal. illegal. <laughs> do not do this at home, kids. This is blackmail. This is a felony in the United States. We do not recommend this. But hey, here we are. So, Prince, I'm gonna need a little favor for you. No boats. I just need you to go find me some gemstones. They're definitely not stolen. I don't know why. I don't <laughs> like literally he, he asks us to do something. And he's like, I'm a nice guy. But if you if you do this for me, I won't blackmail you. <laughs> literally just like, I'm a nice guy. If you're <laughs> if you do what I ask, I won't do illegal things to you and totally blow your cover. Uh, uh, it's a great game. The papers will run you out of town. Capiche? I, uh, Yaramir Yager would be an alchemist because he has two different sized feet. <sighs> and he's made of I titanium. I still believe it would be a better run without Dino. Uh, I wish I could skip Dino. Anyway, so conveniently, the quest that we have is, well, it's really close to where I parked. How about that? That's weird. Huh, it's almost like I planned that ahead of time or something. Maybe I had advanced knowledge of the run. But anyway, yes. uh, this is a nice little cinematic. Again, this is chapter one. Chapter one really is here to introduce you to how the game works, like kind of the controls, get you comfy with some of the features of the game. And from this point, 
it's also designed to really kind of show off uh, the power of the Luminous engine, which was uh, Square Enix's in-house uh, physics engine for the game. They really wanted to show off, like, look at the texture, the lighting effects, the dust effects, the particles. You know, as you follow it over, you get this really, really awesome lens flare that kind of flicks back in your eyes. You know, it's, uh, you know, designed to, designed to show off what they could do. Uh, this, this game, honestly, was a little bit too powerful for just a bog stock PlayStation 4, in my opinion. Runs pretty, pretty nicely on the PS4 Pro, especially if you swap it out for a hard drive like I have. I recommend doing that to any anything that has a hard drive in it because solid states are just so much better. Um, runs really well on PC once they got that all patched up and ported. Thank you much. Well, even uh, still, when you as, put it on PC, it does need a good PC. I forgot it. Oh, well. I'll live with it. I can just offload potions and dibble dabble. Um, that is the only game that uses the engine, as far as I know. Uh, Square Enix, however, is working on a project. It's literally called Project Athea, which I believe they debuted for the PS5. It was like one of the PS5 reveal thingamadoodads, but I think that's not slated for really anything until 2022. Warranty schmoranty. Stuff they've got is on, um... A lot of stuff's gotten delayed as well, so... Yeah. Mm. Anyway, I'll get back to the story. Sorry. Forgive me. Uh, anyway, Dino's calling us a boat. We're gonna go fishing. I'm gonna get married. Great, great speed run, right? Let me up. We're like almost. We're sub half an hour. We're home free. This yeah. is dope. I don't know why I even put four and a half hours down as an estimate. I'm lying to myself. Uh, anyway, bad news. Uh, apparently, the the boat is not here. Um, and we have a really serious case of bedhead. Not sure why I'm fully dressed in a suit and tie and stuff getting out of bed, but... Since you were trying to look good. Yeah, I mean, look at Gladio getting all dressed up, forgetting how to button his shirt again in the morning. Glabiolus over I here. I think he, you know, ripped all the buttons off, and they're just not there anymore. He just he just flexes, and they shoot off like, like a BB gun. Listen, duck. if you can hammer Sting! a nail into solid rock like that, I, I think you're allowed. I can't believe Dino called us a boat. So rude of him. Anyway, so long story short, our dad died, the city got invaded, and the evil empire took over. So technically, we're no longer a prince. I am a king. <laughs> I have a tear. Did I actually make a Borat reference? That's horrible. I apologize. You mustn't lose faith. I don't think that was on the card. That was not on the bingo card. Give it a rest. I'm thinking about Popsicle Graveyard, though. Lime <laughs> Popsicle sounds great right now. Yeah, we're not getting married yet. Much like myself, my wedding's been on hold for nine months now. So, unfortunate. Um, anyway, what happens in that massive cutscene is basically you see... Um, the Empire come in and invade Insomnia and basically betray uh, King Regis. The, the, the backstory of the, the wedding is it was also a peace treaty uh, to, you know, prevent war between the Empire and Insomnia. And, well, Altish is out there doing its own thing, even though it's technically an annex. Um, but, yeah, Insomnia, not such hot shape right now. Um, we'll get a little bit more information here once we get out of the car and get rolling. Obviously, we're not going that direction as there is a roadblock. And, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to let us in. Also, we don't really have any strats to fight with that specific type of mech. It's a, it's a messy fight. You have to you have to break both missile launchers and then hope you can get a two-handed sword charge break on, the, on one of the legs and then hopefully hammer it. We, we used to have to fight fight one of them in the run. It was bad. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, I've been with this run pretty much since day one. So I've I've seen this game evolve from seven hours down to, well, there's a new game plus category now that's under 25 minutes. 
Let's make a detour. There ought to be a decent. I still don't know how I feel about that part. It's pretty interesting. It actually uses the same. Um, the it's the same premise as what I do when I park the car at the hotel, and delay that dialogue. Just leave the menu open. The game struggles with. Uh, actually pretty similar to near automata strats um the game can't handle two dialogue boxes at once that is not where i wanted to go but actually that kind of works out i might actually start doing that that was really clean um so the game can't handle two dialogue boxes at once uh so you can then if you're quick enough and in certain circumstances open up a third menu which just causes the game to pretty much forget about pretty much all of your location data and you can just kind of wander around as you please, basically. Last warp strike there, and we should be coming up to the end of chapter one. Looking pretty nice. Uh, my guess is just probably right around the 29 minute mark, which is where I want to be if I'm stopping to grab photos, doing a little extra talk and making a, making a minor mistake or two. Ignis sitting in a chair. Pretty close. The music is really Looks good. Like it was about 29.05. Yeah, it's not bad at all. The music is really good. Bingo card time. It is provided by the lovely and talented Yoko Shimomura, who has basically been with with Square for, I want to say, almost 30 years, if not more. She is responsible for countless timeless classics such as Super Mario uh, RPG and uh, the, the entire Kingdom Hearts series. <laughs> so she uh, is very, very talented. Uh, she also did one of my other speedruns and favorite games, Parasite Eve. Bit of a banger soundtrack on that one as well. Dude, accidental routing percent all day, every day. I apologize. My nose is so itchy. It's very dry in here. And so now that we've uh, confirmed that everything is as bad as we had heard it was, we are going to drive off to find the rest of the uh, King's Square. Why do I, am I just now processing that that light, that uh, power pole is like completely sideways? Yeah, you mean most of them on the left side of the road? I... <laughs> Here's a fun yeah. fact, because I, I actually did it for the first time since my first time playing the game in practice two days ago. That first fight we have in the game, you can actually examine the, the, the telegraph pole and they, they literally ask about it. What happened huh. to this telegraph pole? I I'm am going to advance. I'm going to have to go back and do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Prompto's like, wow, what did this? Prompto is my favorite boy in the run. He is just such a sweetie cinnamon roll. Precious little muffin. Stupid, stupid hair. That's the only reason I'm not wearing the wig tonight. It's like 80 degrees in my apartment. I literally just dyed my hair. I don't want literally just purple and blue and pink rolling down my face looking like an absolute lunatic also shout outs to cup noodle very tasteful product placement blends right in yeah. there is actually an entire story quest line not well it's a it's a quest line involving the perfect cup of noodles yep so we hear heard that uh one guy from the the King's Guard survived. His name is Kor the Immortal. Aptly named. So we're gonna go and try to meet up with him. For the I forgot this is a European marathon. It's about twenty eight Celsius in my apartment, roughly. I and we do, we don't even have the heat on. It's. It's just our apartment complex is literally, apparently, just sits on the sun. Even though it's 1C outside right now. Very, very warm. Um, but yeah, we're going to go meet Kor. Um, the other small interesting tidbit is there are reports that we're dead. Yes. I don't think, I don't think those are correct, but we'll just use it to our advantage anyway. Uh, I mean, that's a really good tactical advantage to have. Like, ah, that can't be the King Noctis. He's dead. Hey. Free sneak percent, I guess. How well you think it'll work for us? Uh, it'll last about, well, as long as my first stealth mission does in this game. Ah, nice. 
Anyway, this is another sweet little time save that I... Either Yida Moda, who is the current world record holder on this console, um, or maybe Ranmaru figured out. But again, you just drive the car on a different path, park it in a different place, and you save like three seconds. The parking is a little bit little bit hit or miss sometimes there's a secondary place you can park it but if you mess it up it turns into like losing 15 seconds pretty bad anyway we're also introduced to the royal tombs um there is a long line of lucian kings of which we are a part of and our father regis was um but the kings are buried with their weapons and well we'll just say they are all kings uh, as the game tells us, we'll learn a little bit more about that later. Um, but basically, we are being told, hey, why don't you go gather these, get some power, get some strength. Uh, and we also have to meet up with the marshal here, Kor, who's going to help us kind of figure out our next move. So, I mean, right now, we're, we're the, you know, the forces of insomnia are basically spread out pretty much everywhere, trying to escape the city, trying to figure out where to regroup. Um... So they're pretty much looking for anywhere to go and uh while we're here we're gonna collect some of these weapons there are 13 total royal arms in all uh in this run story-wise we i think i get seven or eight um seven sounds right some some of you may know one of my previous runs i did for gdq a couple uh, a couple of weeks ago which is the level one all royal arms omega run where we have to get the rest of the weapons uh, they are really cool. What makes these items special is they all have some sort of special modifier to them. They also have unique uh, attack animations. And uh, the other thing, which is kind of the con of using them, and it's kind of like a strategic thing, really, is these weapons are definitely a bit more powerful than the standard weapons you're going to find or able to purchase. Uh, but using them takes a toll on your health. Um, and you'll notice that eventually there are a couple other things that also do that as well in this game. One little piece of information that we forgot to mention when we were talking about the Megalixir in Chapter 1, sometimes you'll see me uh, go into first-person view at very, very awkward times. Uh, it actually skips the item pickup animation, and along the, the long way of the run saves us about five to six seconds. Again, it sounds really insane until we start explaining just how easy it is to lose time in this run, uh, especially to things that are not your fault. Uh, <clears throat> currently, for me, I can enter the last 15 minutes of this speed run three minutes ahead, and with my worst recorded times, I could come out after the final boss on the, you know, stop the timer, and with my worst recorded results, and this is only within the past year, I could go from three minutes ahead to about two and a half minutes behind. <laughs> Just out of sheer luck. There's also the very, very long shot chance that I actually can't finish the run. Happens. Not often. Yep, not very often. And I'm probably going to... I know I'm going to end up with extra money the way I route this anyway. I'm probably going to go 7-1 and 1 holding on to extra Mega Phoenix just in case. I've never okay. seen him. I've never seen pull more than six, but I'll I'll go seven if money is right. Uh, so I'll probably grab a couple little extra things along the way, and just make sure I grab them. Um. Anyway, we have now been sent to find the next royal tomb. Um. I have a two second delay. I don't know if I'm going to be able to remind you to get everything. Oh, it's promise. fine. Don't worry about it. That was like a more general catch-all. Just remind me to check my money along the way. Anyway, I'm going to go into the Ascension again. This is basically like our skill tree and level up skills. Um, I'll let Alfina handle that once I finish this menu. And basically, I'm doing this now because I have a fight and I want to just make sure everything stays pretty okay. And we're looking good. If you want to explain what that menu was and all the other things that just happened. I, I'm going to be honest with everyone that I don't remember every single part of every single menu because they are very different between the versions that I run and the versions that uh, he runs. So but the biggest thing is getting um, our ascension. So throughout the game, you do different things between conversations, fights, when we uh, rest and level up, and all sorts of things to get AP. So we spend that AP on our ascension tree, and there's certain abilities that are going to be prioritized to help us out throughout the, 
the game. Yes. Making sure that we can do this run as quickly as possible. This fight is cleaner than it's been in a while. Yep. Ooh, Mega Elixir. Okay, <laughs> Mega Elixir basically just fixed all of my money. I'm plus 540 yep. gil. So that Mega Elixir... I figured, elixir, I figured it's a... I'd take the two-second loss on it just for the risk. Yeah. Um, that Mega Elixir is a, a random chance item, so it, it can be one of five things? Uh, One of... For that item, it's one of three things. It's I want to say seventy percent. I have gotten at least the fourth item that was I not say on your like list once. Okay, then I I forget what the split is. I think it's like something. The mega elixir is only like a five percent chance. It's rather low. Generally, it's either an elixir yeah. or a debased coin, which is four hundred gil or two hundred gil, one hundred and fifty gil, or whatever I end up selling this for, which I think is a thousand. Did but, not get the cutscene skip coming out of there. Sometimes you can get a free cutscene skip. It's very, very like camera dependent, and as you can tell, my camera was nowhere near where I needed it to be. It was a good try, though. There's a lot of little things uh, in this game that we skip or manipulate based on where the camera is or really, really small bits of our movement, and it's either perfect or it's not. There is no almost. Anyway, Ascension, I'll give you the quick rundown on what the skills we got were. Uh, we got, I couldn't see them all. Yeah, I do it so quick anymore. Uh, we got Chain Warp, which increases our Warp Strike damage based on distance from the uh, target. We got a Inventory Slot for an accessory for Noctis. And we got Elementalism, which allows us to draw more magic from magic points, as well as Power Craft, which increases the power of our magic by 10. Uh, I'm actually going to make my first magic here and kind of re-equip myself again. Uh, I'm also going to dump the one magic I have to potentially save myself a few seconds later. I need 91. Frame perfect. And so the magic in this game is actually on tonight, baby. Stay extremely on. powerful. Um, and often underutilized by a lot of people when they're first playing through it. Um, I know because it feels I weird. There's a 30 second much... cooldown on it. What do you, what do you like? How am I supposed to use the magic in this game if I can only use it once every 30 seconds? But also, like, what you're actually missing out on if you don't really know as much about the uh, about the magic is you're gonna miss what to kind of mix in as that other piece, um, what items to mix in to get more out of it. So like right now we just mix in the sheep's milk that we had bought previously and we did dump all of our sheep's milk into it. Um, so we get our dual cast and higher power. You can add things like, I, I don't remember what the items are, but you can make it. So like it also makes them the enemies that get hit by a poison to give you more XP, uh, get more casts out of it, because we get up to a quint cast in our later mixes. Um, all the different things that, that you can do with magic, it almost is unlimited potential. But if you don't know, it's very easy to miss a lot of these things. I spent 990 gil, and we can literally one-shot any non-boss enemy well into chapter Once five. We love well, actually, yep. chapter six. <laughs> Which is which is absurd. Um, and, uh, you know, just let me let me roll through this one, just because uh, I've been working on it. So we mentioned the perfect thousand. Uh, we mentioned earlier superior restorative horrible. Uh, we mentioned earlier the effects of the royal arms. As you know, I have the sword of the wise equipped. Wow, horrible drops. Um, the sword of the wise is the first royal arm that we get, and its special ability is that its first attack has like a kind of a range on it we can warp um and it also does double the amount of damage the reason we have this and we did that menu back there is because although these damage rolls aren't proving it uh our average damage is about a thousand which is exactly the amount of hp that the regular soldiers have we're two two muscle stim are you wow come on bro thank you um we have two muscle stim which is good uh i'll explain the drops later but basically it's designed to just go through this as quickly as possible uh this is looking pretty clean except that little jump hang there and that should take out everyone i have a lot of muscle stims we're in great shape for that one magitech booster i'm guaranteed 165 later nice four muscle stim i can save time if that carries over to ravis because uh, I, I believe that actually already guarantees one for Ravis or for Fierce, wherever I want to decide to use it. Yep. 
Should. Right as rain. The Nifs couldn't take their eyes. If my off math us. is right. Thanks to you, we were spared yes. the attention. Uh, anyway, the purpose of that area and me complaining the entire time and stuttering and stopping is basically keeping track of the drops we get. Extra money for stuff I'm not going to use. Um, the rest of it is magic for Chapter 6. Anything bonus ends up being used for movements in Chapter 13 and 14. Uh, pretty much every ma extra Magitek booster I get over two because I'm just going to run this risky. It has the potential to save five to 15 seconds over the entire run. Yeah, Mello, are you still here? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely still here. <laughs> Do I have uh, have some time right now? Um, You know what? You'll probably... I, I'm so sorry. I just completely got sucked up into it. Um, Let me get I've through this fight. It. This is a big, scary fight. This guy is supposed to be like a really tough boss, and uh, he leaves his very, very vulnerable uh, missile launcher out in the open. And the other thing, uh, the other special quality of the Sword of the Wise uh, in this, the way we have it used, it can't actually break anything. So we just create a weak spot. And then basically when you get weak spots, you're supposed to be able to break them to further cripple the enemy. Uh, yeah, we just abuse it. Um, but you yeah, can, much you can actually take it break it if you full combo versus the the hit in and go. Oh yeah, if you drag. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty cleared up. Uh, you should have a good bit of time to talk, and I can catch us back up. We do actually have a bit of a driving uh, driving bit coming up, but I have to manually control the car to save some time. So yeah, if you have yeah. anything cool, feel free to promote. Feel free. Oh to bump. yeah, we we got some cool things. So let me start with this. We have um, fifteen dollars from Nanaki Emmy. Thank you so much. They say $15 for my favorite Final Fantasy 15 runner slash bachelor party organizer, Kyo's. <laughs> the only luck, one you know. <laughs> have fun, and let's raise some money for an awesome cause. We also have um, a little bit late on the luck here, but from Elfensign, $35. They say good luck on the run, Kyo's. Signed, your favorite lurker, Elf. <laughs> and then we also have... Um, mod three six six donates five dollars. They say you can't just stop there. I liked your singing, but I think commentary is a bit more important than singing for all of us not knowing anything about the run. Money goes towards Iris for the final photo, as she's just the best character in the game. Wait, wait, we're saying Iris you're, is the best. You're character. banned in my chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was that name again? Could you write that one down for me, real quick? Oh no, I I already forgot. Uh, <laughs> can I just say, by the way, before I continue, I do want to read another donation here. Um, but I just wish that you talked to me the way that you talked to Prompto, <laughs> because that was some uh, real love. I have. Well, I'm wearing his outfit, so I figured I'd figured I'd channel the sweetest cinnamon bun. I was gonna well, say, if it makes you feel any better, you sound like a, a warmer version of Creative Ellie, and I have the biggest love for Ellie. Oh, okay. Well, I don't. If know you ever get the is, chance but... to listen to him, you'd be like, "Oh, we do kind of sound similar." Very interesting. Hayden's. Well, um, if you want to hear my voice, how about this? Sharky donates five hundred dollars. Hey, there's Sharky. <laughs> Sharky says, "How do I cheer on one of my best buddies while also potentially ruining everything for the next four hours?" Let's split this between Prompto and Iris. You're gonna kill it today, brother. Mega proud to be your friend. Let's go! 54! Shoutouts to Lude Dolphin and Little Sharky and the Final Fantasy 13 community, which is generally why I play Final Fantasy 13 music through this. Big shark. Big Sharky. Uh, you got anything else for us, Mello? Or are we cleared for takeoff? Uh, let's do one more. $5 for my friend Becky Chan. They say, unfortunately, I can't watch the whole run, but I can throw in a little donation for good luck and a good cause. Stay comfy. Big comfin. Thank you, Becky. Yeah, Thanks, $5, Becky. $10, it all means so much. Every little bit counts. Ooh, four, one, two. So Ooh, while we were at the, uh, the gas station there. Yeah, no, go Pronto ahead. This is asked me. Us, if we could go and see the chocobos and we told him no and i'm, I'm sorry to everybody who was looking forward to chocobos in this run 
I'm the answer is no. Is Ebony really all that good? I might have answered before, but yes, it is. Uh, so, so this I'm is one of I'm our good on money. I'm I'm gonna roll this and skip the yeah. rest of my menus. So all right. So this is one of our big shopping points in the run. Um, there's a lot of items that we want to pick up while we're here. Um, a lot of things. Not right now. We do get interrupted by Prompto in the middle of the drive. But... Twice. Oh yeah, twice, you're right. Um, but it's no, it's no big deal. So instead of uh, going to see the Chocobos, uh, we uh, are going to go To the middle of nowhere. Town. I literally, we're we're, yeah, I just picked a random point on the map. I don't know where Listalum is or whatever they call it. So I just kind of like picked a spot. Hopefully it works yeah, it's out. Fine. Yeah, Chocobo, people love Chocobos. I love the Chocobos in this game. It's super fun. Uh, but due to our insane amount of testing and routing, by the time we could find a like with this route, we'd have to completely reroute to find an effective way to fight uh, Deadeye. But by the time we even get to fight Deadeye, I'll have chapter five halfway over. Like, seriously. It takes about 15 minutes to go and get the Chocobos. I'll be finishing the first half of chapter five by then. So yep. we, it, it, it literally is not worth it. It'd be like a 15, 20 minute time loss. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna mix it up. We we gonna we gonna get hype for the near replicant remaster coming out in a few months. I knew this was coming. Oh, you know it's coming. I'm ready for it. It's so good. Um. So anyway, this is like I said, this is one of the the longer driving portions. But this is the the turn coming up is really what got me really hardcore thinking about how we can continually save time on the run and just pushing it further between myself, Yida. Uh, our commentator who's not here tonight, Barbados, uh, and myself, both trying to figure out how we can like kind of delay menus while we drive. Like this run exists basically for the fact that, that we have the ability to, we basically take our store with us. And really all we need in this run is elixirs and Phoenix Downs for the most part. Like, yeah, we buy a few weapons and, and, and items along the way, but when we need them, we're already at that point. So, um, just being able to minimize how much time we actually stay in the car is rather important. But uh, I guess uh, I, I've been trying trying to avoid looking at the chat, but we do have some downtime. I don't know if you have any like any bumpers to push, Mellow, or if anyone in chat oh. has like questions about the run. We can kind of open up the floor. I got about two and a half minutes from here. Well, I do want to say briefly, um, don't forget that ViewSonic, one of our sponsors, is actually providing not just one, but two prizes. Um, there are two different monitors. If you go to prizes.esamarathon.com, you can read all about the two monitors that you can win. If you donate either a minimum uh, donation of $25 or $35, um, like you can qualify yourself for one dimension. or both of these wonderful monitors. Uh, they have a really good description, so I would recommend going to the website, checking them out. And they are cumulative. So if you donate five dollars five times over the course of the marathon, you qualify yourself for the twenty-five dollar donation. So again, that is prizes.esamarathon.com um, to check out the two monitors that you could nice. have a chance to win. I uh, my my main monitor is actually one of the View Sonic 144 hertz uh, boys, and I gotta tell you, man, that monitor has just been an absolute monster for me. I've been work from home for the past year, so my computer actually stays on pretty much 24 7 at this point going on a almost a year straight um and this monitor has just been incredibly awesome the entire time would recommend and that's a that's a cool prize uh i also want to say the reason we're all here is for the alzheimer fondin uh, alzheimer fondin is the swedish national fundraising organization focusing on all alzheimer's disease and other dementia related diseases did you know that the goal of Alzheimer Fondin is to be an important research financer in this work? In the absence of effective medicines, it is important to research the best preventative measures for Alzheimer's disease. Um, all donations go to the Alzheimer Fondin, and sincerely, I'm sure everybody here appreciates uh, every donation so much. If you if you get some more donations in now, um, this would be a great time to get it read. We do have five dollars from Cole Twenty Four who says $5 for Kyo's cotton candy hair and prompto photo. It is his camera after all, isn't it? 
Yeah, this is a rarity. I I, uh, I generally use a virtual avatar when streaming, so I, d I decided to 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 break my own rule of personal privacy for a little bit tonight to to hang out with some really cool people and uh, support a really good cause. Actually, if you look, the Prompto wig's hanging off of my video game rack, like right oh, over my is. shoulder. Yeah. No, it's my camera. Any smilers in the chat? Any smilers? <laughs> smilers? Any smilers in the chat? Um, I will say that I'm excited. Who's gonna Who's gonna win this bid war? It, it it'll right it'll rage it's... hard. Yeah, Trust me. It, it seems it's it's uh, between Iris and Prompto right now. Yeah. Ah. The, so so the in joke with me is I I do not like Iris at all. Um, I'll explain it once we meet her at the end of this chapter. I have very good reason. I have very good reason. The law is on my side. After years of fighting the law and not winning, I've learned to just go with the flow sometimes. <laughs> me. Hold us together, Alfina. <laughs> hey, we didn't get the, the one in 1,000 chance tunnel encounter that ruined a, a PB pace run last or two nights ago. Last night, two nights ago, whatever. Uh, two nights ago. It all blends together, dude. I'm literally just Prince Noctis riding in my car. Traffic pattern's nice, though, which means I am about roughly 10 seconds behind where I want to be, which is pretty decent. I'll take it for a marathon. And plus grabbing photos and stuff, that's not bad at all. Yeah, not bad at all. My next so, photo is chapter five. My next photo yep. is chapter five. So even um, the time take to uh, grab photos and things like that can actually impact little things like what cars are on the road at what point. Um, we've seen where the timing is off by a little bit cause us to do things like suddenly have traffic where we really cannot afford traffic. Do you like my literally pixel perfect parking space? Because I like it really too. And I've yeah, now figured out I, how to, um, you like that without even zooming in the map? Don't know how you did that. And I don't like it. <laughs> you Mostly know, because I know I'll never replicate it. I should go outside and throw a football or something. <laughs> Get a hobby. Let's see if I can okay. sneak this off of Midgar's armor. Got it. Nice. Beautiful. Um, All right. So that so, item grab is not always easy because Midgar's armor is right there ready to aggro onto us, and we do not want yeah. to get in that fight, but we would like that Mega Phoenix. Yeah, I'll take the extra 1,000 gil. I'm actually riding about eight or 900 over, which means I can actually skip a menu at some point. Well, a portion of a menu at some point. This is four warp strikes. I am going to do something really rare that I will never do. Uh, in a run ever. It's going to cost safety me save. about 15 seconds. Yeah, I'm going to safety save. Um, there is a skip here. I'd much rather show it off than fail it and get stuck in this fight because literally there's a chance that if I get it the second try, it's actually a stir. Anyway, this is the ice slide skip. You just kind of throw the camera the direction you want to go and the game's like, all right, I guess we'll go that way. Uh, my one one massive critique of this game, I know everyone, someone in chat has many critiques of this game and is going to tell me that I'm wrong, um, is that the ice physics really don't work the way they're intended. I'm going to try and see if I can do it. Uh, if you land on the ice uh, sometimes in a certain direction, we'll actually slide up against gravity. Uh, this one, no, looks like we're going to actually follow gravity for once. But yeah, there are times that you can, I do that jump and you just end up going up the slope. I've done it and then get stuck and go up the slope. And it doesn't really make sense. Ah, but yes, there is a very, very interesting skip here that skips a rather lengthy encounter. And we've gotten it somewhat consistent enough that we have completely changed the route of the game to not have actually any way to deal with this fight if you get it. The way to deal with it is to just reset and you say, darn, that was a good hour wasted, huh? Uh, along the way here, I'm going to grab uh, these magical deposits here because I'm going to pretty much always be making magic or saving up to make magic. Um, some of the advanced runners, I don't know if Ranmaru does it yet because it's such a low percentage, uh, but Yida does it. You can actually jump off of this ledge that we're we're climbing, do a warp strike, and then a dagger, da midair dagger attack and kind of float over to the other end of this shimmy point. 
and you end up uh just completely skipping this entire shimmy point and then if you do it right you can skip it into the mind flayer skip uh saves about a two minute fight and about a 20 second um encounter or a 20 second shimmy i'm just gonna take my time on this get it nice and lined up looks great pretty sure i got it i got it cool so yeah you'll notice the enemies were spawning but I was so far past where they're really designed to spawn that the game's like, oh, well, you're close enough to the door. So I guess I, I you know what, man, you're close enough. You got it. We'll let you do it. You can skip the fight, uh, which is good because this fight is brutal, whether you're prepared for it or not. Uh, it's, it's very technical. The way we used to do it involved very, very delicately timing and placing a dual cast Thundaga to wipe out one wave of imps and then a second wave um and then we just have basically the mind flayers to pick through uh you'll notice that we did not stop at Lestalem, so we can't actually go back there but thankfully right on the outskirts of town there's a gas station and because we passed it it counts as a parking spot so we're just going to fast travel back to the parking spot which is realistically actually closer to where we want to be anyway than the normal parking space in Lestalem. Yeah, basically what happens if you uh, if you have to fight the Mind Flayer, it's basically me just uh, doing some Warp Strike spam and hoping I don't get grabbed because it is an ugly encounter. We literally routed out any magic or, like, leveling for it uh, just because doing that is much faster. And to be honest, it's fairly consistent. So that's one of our three big skips down that I need to get cleanly in order to make this run just that much faster. Anyway, we're about to meet up with Iris. Um, I'll explain why she's really bad in a minute. Um, and it looks like the some of the other Crowns Guard and Royal Retainer members have kind of made it to the safety of Lestalem. Uh, Lestalem's a pretty cool town. Definitely has like a, uh, definitely a European feel to it. Kind of nice cobbled streets very very classic architecture anyway we're gonna meet iris i don't like her if you want to make me mad which pretty much everyone wants to do make me take a final photo with her i will get angry but whatever it's part of the fun you look good all things considered for for note she is uh gladys little sister sure don't worry don't worry, That's... my monologue is prepared. I've got this. <laughs> the PS5 saves 8 to 10 minutes roughly with load time. We only have one runner that has a PS5, and their English is not that great, and my Japanese is not that great either. Um, but from preliminary, just me comparing our times uh, versus the PS4 Pro solid state versus the PS5, the PS5 is about 8 to 10 minutes faster, generally with loads and just the fact that it can actually run consistently 60 FPS, which saves a lot of time. Anyway, this is Iris. She's going to be like, oh, we should go out together and like do this stuff. And I'm going to continue just being a jerk because it's faster and it gives me the results I want, mainly AP. Um, yeah, we don't like her. I don't like her. There are three reasons why I do not like her. One, she's 15. I don't need to explain it just that number two noctis is engaged we are on our way to go and get married we're engaged numero trace uh numero numero three numero letter c um she is your best bro's sister too many red flags just just with that one i know better my mama and my dad raised me right my dad might be in chat. If anyone sees my my dad, say hi. He's pretty cool. I'm gonna buy two Kettier ginger from this very fine gentleman with his beautiful wares. Ah, oh, so beautiful. Um, we will need those for the food that we're planning to take with us through the game. Uh, the food is actually probably one of the most. Nobody really thinks about it too much. I've seen casually, uh, but is actually the most important part of the speed run. About 90% of the strats we do in this run are literally impossible without the correct food. My dad's probably asleep. I say, this is a lot of high dads, and I'm not sure that I've seen them around. No, my dad's not in chat. 
Sounds like a hard I will tell him all that you all said hi. It's kinda cool, actually. Yeah, my dad's cool. He hangs out in my Twitch chat. It, I guess. All right. He's even Once subbed. <laughs> yeah. My dad. My dad's subbed. He's in Discord, too. And he's in a Discord. And let's see if we get lucky on uh, Iris dialogue skip. Um, so nice. there is actually a chance that I can skip a piece of dialogue from Iris. It used to be pretty uh, consistent when we used to stop over at the weapon shop and buy an item that we no longer, you know, really need. Uh, I am bench, 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 clear. So I'm going to get the dialogue skip. So she's going to start talking. I'm going to go back this way and she's just going to get cut off. This almost feels like a date. See, she even says like, this feels like a date. No. In the immortal words of Noctis, literally through half of this game. No. <laughs> but yeah, that was our date with Iris. It's um, not great. I wish it was over. If I could skip this, we'd save about two minutes. Just just literally hit it with the no and go back to bed Mother's and wake dead. back up. There's my dad. That 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 sounds like my dad. <laughs> I'm your only son, so yes, by default, I have to be your favorite, I guess. Unless you count Snowman as your son. I mean, I wouldn't be offended. The cat's pretty cool. It's for you. But it's a surprise, so you're going to have to wait. Yeah, it's a stroll. To be fair, Iris actually is pretty cool in combat. Uh, she doesn't do a lot of damage, but basically she plays the part of a healer, and she um, also has the ability to get um, you out of unnecessary combat. Are you having? A, a, is the game good on your end? On my end, yeah. Okay, because we're um glitching out a little bit. I have zero drop frames. My bit rate is stable at right around five thousand kbps. Yeah. Thanks for the story. Yeah, because uh, my feed has the, you always did notice the little things and like his hand twitching. Oh, that's interesting. Um, what would you like me to do, Mello? Uh, Mello got up for a moment. Oh, okay. I that's gave handy. him the okay a little while ago because I figured everything would be fine. Okay, that's really weird. So it's not a feedback loop on my end. Um, who's running tech right now? I don't know. I'm not one to stand on ceremony, but such an occasion calls for an introduction. Now I'm just going to keep going for now because I have no direction. Please. Oh, is it? That's weird. Um. All right. Well, I I don't have any. Any direction on this? I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, Mello, you just got back. Hey, Mello, we're having a small tech issue where um, things are glitching. Oh, uh, yes, I see. Um, <laughs> give me one second. Let me ping somebody. Okay. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm seeing it on yours. All right. I'm just going to start and restart stream. There you go. Give that a shot. Yeah, I wasn't showing any drop frames or anything weird on my end, so. Yeah, my bitrate's smooth as smooth as velvet. That looks so much there we go. Yeah, it looks like it did it. Okay. Yeah, so Iris now gets number four reason. Sorry. She crashed my stream apparently. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. To be honest, it might just be something because I'm streaming like on one of the heavier servers where we basically streamed in New York or DC. So those are the those are the heavy Twitch servers, especially this time of night on the East Coast. So I'll sit up a little bit here. Welcome to chapter four of the of the worst bachelor party ever. So um, while all of that was glitching out, what you guys missed, just as a heads up. We met up with a guy named Arden. Again. Again. And uh, we had a... Oh, before we met Arden, we had a headache. Fine. We found out from uh, this kid that that cave that we went to 
uh, had a, a magic weapon in it, and it was so cool. And it's actually a really neat way that the game is programmed that it notices that, hey, you already did this. So we have a different dialogue option for you versus the normal dialogue would be telling you to go do that. It's hard for me to picture that guy in the Empire. But it's even harder to imagine him as a Lucian. And now uh, Arden is, is saying that he's going to take us to the the meteor, which we need to go to, but um, only if we drive and follow him. Hey, Althena, you remember that one time you followed me somewhere? I thought we were never speaking of that again. Dude, I'm really, really good at driving. Extremely fast. Like, really good at it. <laughs> Any NASCAR fans in the chat? We're about to we're about to pull a Rubbins racing on this one. Uh, you can actually get past Arden. Uh, it's a little bit weird on the physics, but it saves some time if you can do it right. Just give him the old, the old, the old, the old uh, dump and run there. Changes between Royal Edition and Regular. Uh, chapter 14 is completely revamped. That's pretty much the big one. To be mm -hmm. honest, Chapter 14 is completely redone. They also added in a couple of extra cutscenes and a little bit of extra tidbitty information around the way. With nature, what's not to like? Now in the wild, there are no rules to follow. No. What say we call? What say? The arc. Neither are. So we. Someone had a good one in chat. That was really good. That was that was good. I get that. You drive like an idiot. Thanks, Dad. Wait, if dad, anyone had my dad him, makes fun of me, if anyone had my dad makes fun of me in chat on your bingo card, you can write that one down. That's a I should have put that as a free space on one of them. Well, we weren't a hundred percent sure Dad would make it because of timing. Yep, and yes, Drake. Royal Edition is the same as Windows Edition minus a few DLC items. The way we speed run the game, though, we have the same DLC items that are in the Windows edition. So it's so the so the routes and the runs are compatible and comparable. Fancy phrasing. All right, don't mess up this pass. I've been having a little bit of struggle bus with this one. That looks great, though. Just kind of ease it right in there. Shout outs to the current Formula One drivers of 2021, except Lance Stroll. He knows why. If I could get away it. with it, though, I would definitely add in the uh, the running in the 90s, uh, you know, like Eurobeat theme just to play for this. But instead, I play the chase because like, hey, it's Final Fantasy VII. It's a chase. It's kind of close enough, right? Anyway, you'll see sure. more inline driving here in order to just save as much time as we possibly can. Uh, I'm also going to try and set it up so Arden smashes into the back of my car just to literally gain a couple extra inches. Uh, every little bit helps in this game, realistically. Mm -hmm. Well, you just do what you gotta. Look, I love my dad very much, but I would feel kind of bad if he bought me an entire Formula One team and I t and copied the best race car and I still couldn't finish on a podium without an absolute miracle happening. Even if they couldn't, he'd still be all right. Yeah, Iggy's eyes ain't that bad. Shade removed, shots fired. <laughs> Yeah, to, to be honest, like this, literally any fraction of a second that I can save in this run is literally just buffer. Um, like I said, I came off of running near Automata any percent for like a year straight. So the importance of literally tenths of a second are not lost on me. That game where, I, where I'm at with it, a, a tenth or two tenths of a second time save in a, in a segment is fabulous. And it is enough to really make or break a run or the longevity of a run. Um, I, like I said, I can literally lose five minutes against my PB in literally the last supposedly five minutes of the game. Uh, so any time save I can continue to stuff into this run just, you know, prevents us from having anything weird happen later on. I really like Lando Norris. I think Lando's got potential. Uh, George Russell as well did really, really well this year. I'm proud of him. I also am a fan of Shoeys. 
Do I have an Australia reference on the bingo cards? I don't know. I, I do still have the I video do. of you doing a shoey though. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. It's a good one. Even though, uh, even though Ash isn't Australian. What the Empire's up to. <laughs> Ash is not Australian. You, but you made that for Nick, who was Australian. Oh yeah, I made it for Nick. I don't know why Ash trick came on. Oh well. Anyway, hey, we we've keep thinking Ash is Australian. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Even though she's not. Is that what I think it is? <laughs> Didn't expect to find a royal tomb here. Would be a shame. Anyway, hey, look, it's a royal tomb. Very, very strategically placed here. Uh, this is actually a fairly handy weapon. We'll actually use this one in the run. It's the Blade of the Mystic. Its special property is when you uh, warp strike with it, it sends out four projectile, like, heat-seeking projectiles, uh, which track down your enemy, which is really, really handy. We actually used to use it in our Chapter 9 strategy, but no longer need it. Um, it also has the special ability of if you finish a combo with it and then hold the attack button, you give yourself a strength buff that lasts for, like, five to eight seconds. Again, some people use it as strategy. The way my run is set up right now, I'm carrying extra muscle stimulants. So I'm gonna probably dump those on some fights in chapter seven in order to try and buffer us some time into chapter eight, which can be a bit of a nightmare. <clears throat> I haven't sneezed yet because we, we we cleaned the ferret today. I do have a ferret. Maybe, maybe if, uh, Mello, what's like our next kind of Thou like what's our next thousand on the goal meter um next thousand on the goal meter would be twenty five thousand dollars how close are we we are seven hundred and forty eight dollars away all right if we can do that within like i don't know before the end of the run whenever i get a break i'll bring the ferret over and i'll show everybody my ferret if that's cool i guess i don't know i, I don't I, i'm trying to give you cool things to to do here it's 738, by the way. You put okay. my math skills on the spot. <laughs> it's 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 all good, dude. My my math skills literally only deal with time, lumens per watt, and um, and uh, magic math and gill math. I mean, your gill math has seemed on point so far. Yeah, that's the only ones I'm good at, dude. <laughs> uh, and I believe that's uh, on the bingo card somewhere of creating random. Uh... I, I think I kept my work out of it. Yeah, creating random, random incentives, yes. I don't think I have anything regarding lumens per foot or the efficacy of uh, LED lighting. No room for error here. No Five dollar hype train for the ferret. Hey, if 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 ESA is cool with it, I'll do it. Our ferret is named Freya Crescent. We also have a cat who might join us at some point. He is literally the worst cat ever. His name is. Marquise Halim Andor the fourth. Like literally that's on his veterinary paperwork. I've already had Mew join us and leave. Yeah, Mew's Mew's good cat. I'm surprised she didn't say anything. She's a talkative one. Well, she went to get on the um desk, so I glared at her and she ran off. Uh that'll do it. Anyway, uh one big difference you will notice in the speed run. Uh, that I'm, I've yet to like. I'm, I'm kind of notorious for going into casual streams and watching people play games that I speed run because sometimes you get really good ideas from it, or sometimes you just like. I just want to see how other people experience this game and enjoy it. So, to basically work on my commentary, to like kind of see what other people focus on that I don't because I'm busy speed running it. Uh, I have really yet to see anyone do this fight at night like we do in the speed run because. Arden's basically like, oh, we'll rest here. And you're just like, all right, free rest spot, free experience. Cool, I'll take it. Um, I think this fight looks so much better at night. Um, this entire area looks this better area, at night. This like, area, you're going to see all sorts of glowing stuff. The ground's on fire, the very dynamic lighting for Titan, the glowing eyes, the meteor on his back, uh, the hair glistening on Gladio's just remarkable mullet. Dude looking like Jason Worth on the playoff run minus the beard. That's a that's a Philadelphia Phillies baseball reference. <clears throat> anyway, we're gonna have a little chit chat with Gladio. He is going to uh, basically uh, give us the business. Um, one of the one of the only kind of weird issues uh, translating this game from Japanese to English was this kind of 
um, not like a bit of a conference. It's more of a confrontation and a bit of an argument in in English. In Japanese, it's a bit more like you know, kind of hey, come on, dude, you you, you can't be moping around. You got to get better. Um, it just didn't really translate super well into English, so they kind of went with whatever fit the animation. That's the way it's always been. I've embraced my duty, and I take pride in it. There's a couple moments that don't quite translate well, and you're just like, but I... Mm. All right. Good night, Becky. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this. Alfino, do you want to check and see if anyone in chat has an almost full bingo card yet? Hey, Gladio. I do not believe <sighs> any of them should be. That, that's that's good. That means I split up <laughs> split up stuff pretty well. Some of them, from what I've noticed, are kind of need like some later sections. Yeah. I'll toss out a free one. I'm definitely gonna definitely make tea in chapter chapter uh, six. <clears throat> anyway, if anyone remembers that that magic that I made in chapter two, we are now in chapter four. We're two chapters later. We have gained some levels. Um, this magic is still strong enough. It's gonna wipe out this entire entire mob. Just one, two, basically one cast per each. We have no drops. It's rather unfortunate. I was. Basically hoping to get a, another Magitek booster, perhaps, or maybe some uh, Reflex Enhancers. It's a bit too late for Reflex Enhancers, but it would have been good for money. Hey! I'm here! Food's the, food is the free talk space, dude. We, we haven't even brought up the fact that Pop-Tarts are ravioli. The hell is it you hey. want? Quit screwing All right. my head! You gotta be kidding me. Shoutouts to the cube rule. I used I for a long time had that as my uh, status on Discord. It's it you know what? When you don't know how to describe a food, cube rule. Yeah. Comes in hand. Um I don't have too too much tech going on here. Um, basically, we're just gonna continue to ignore every quick time event that we can, um, and intentionally, uh, just try and get hit by Titan whenever we can to speed up this well, process. He told uh, us run. He didn't 100% tell us what direction to run in. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna basically mash a lot of buttons in order to break which direction we're supposed to move. You know, see that a couple of times. Uh, Mello, you got anything to toss in? Anything to promote? Yeah, um, well, we have some donations I would love to read if, uh, if I can. Yeah, feel free. We got like Go two it. minutes until I really have to talk again. I'm yeah, sure everyone amazing. wants a break from listening to me drone on and on. Um, Agrius Corvus donates $20 and they say, I'm tempted to pick Iris because I know how much you love her, but it's got to be Aranea. <laughs> GTO donates $10 and they say, best final photo, please. And you can guess who they put it towards. Ah, uh, how did I guess? Here it is. Definitely Prompto. No, it's Prompto. No. You said Prompto. <laughs> nice. Um, Talius donates fifty dollars. Thank you so much. And they say just to get Kyo's mad. Here's fifty dollars to Iris and a good cause. Balonus, <laughs> Balonus and cheese. <laughs> Bubba, chat's being mean to me. I do want to remind everybody. Um, when you are donating, you can certainly apply your donations to some of the wonderful bids that we have going on. Um, we do have Nico Hart 188 donates five dollars, and they say five dollar hype train for ferret percent. Yeah, wiggle worm. And we also have a ten dollar donation. Thank you so much from Food, and they say Freya hype. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm basically just waiting this out. This is like basically an auto scroller. Yep. I, the only thing that gets faster is how quickly I interact with the rest of my party. And if I can get Gladio to instant spawn, which I'm going to try and set up here. Might have tricked it into working for once. 
It's really finicky. This is a new setup spot because if I fail getting instant Gladio, it's actually slightly faster. Okay. But yeah, this also, area looks here really hi, cool at night. Now that I'll pull out a first person view, everything grounds on fire. You can see all the uh, the Magitek troopers uh, lances blowing crystal. It's pretty neat. If you're here during the day, like you don't see these effects so bright, like you can kind of tell that they're going that these things are happening, but it just doesn't pop the way you're yeah. seeing right now. The, the, the contrast gets jacked up at night, especially because the sky is kind of like that weird cloudy night sky that's got a, a moon creeping through it the uh we were lucky enough to through our community actually one of the one of the devs from the game stumbled onto my channel and was like hey it just like it was so weird it was like hey my name's in the credits i was like hey and they're like no like i sat next to the dude that programmed all the lighting effects <laughs> what do you mean as it scrolls through, like their chat name matches up with the credits. I was like, oh. So uh, we, I've been able to, to procure a lot of information, not like not like inside speed strats, but like I've definitely learned a good bit about like the development of this game and some of the cool effects and how they had to really work to get the lighting and, and physics effects to work in this game. So I definitely have a bit more appreciation of it than the just average runner, speed runner, or casual fan of the game. But it, it, it was super cool, just the amount of work that went into this game to make it kind of mm -hmm. just visually as stunning as it is. I mean, yeah, there are complaints. Uh, I have my complaints about this game, too. The one thing I can't knock it for is being ugly, because it really isn't. I should really actually pull my notes up. My notes are still on Chapter 1. Sign, <laughs> sign of a good run, though. Honestly, that's it's a sign of a good run for me. Yeah. I run better when I'm distracted. Anyway, we've now procured Titan. Chapter so five. we have the, we've curried the favor of the first uh, god of the Hexatheon, which is cool because we're going to need all the help we can get to fight back the Empire because it's pretty much us, the Crown's Guard, and, well, that's it. <laughs> the, odds are, uh, the odds are definitely not in the favor. Um, yeah, everything's set for chapter five. I shouldn't have the menu based on my gill. I'm actually still carrying. Uh, I forgot to grab a photo of Iris. We'll get one in chapter six, actually, when she's in the car. If not, backup is emergency photo in chapter eight finish. Yeah, but you need to check in uh, chapter five for a photo. Uh, no, chapter six. I was wrong. Chapter six is when we meet up with Iris. You said we have the we have the car ride. I know, I know. I was confused. I wrote down all of these things. So go get the can't leave her on Chancellor. This or perhaps. Here's her. So Arden stole our car, basically. Dino blackmails us. Arden steals our car. It's it, this may as well be called Final Fantasy Felons at this point. We should wait until Cindy's done Grand Theft Auto, blackmail, petty larceny. The Empire has it. So glad I took some pre-law classes before I decided to speed run this game, so I know exactly what not to do. So where does that leave us? Anyway, this is the fabled chapter five. This is where the game introduces you to. Chocobos, and we're going to, in typical speedrunner fashion, just completely ignore it. Uh, at our fingertips, we have some of the coolest movement tech in the game. Uh, I will menu it after I do a series of things. Uh, the one thing we're going to do is use this little rest area as an anchor. I am going to abuse the fact that I can warp back to this multiple times in this chapter. Um, you're also going to see some very interesting tech involving um, camera glitching which pre basically prevents us from... Well, it knocks us out of cutscenes where we're not supposed to be able to move. Speaking of felons, the original one is on the phone with us now, Dino, asking us how we're doing, and if we want to swing by Golden Key. Yeah, Dino, I'll hop right on it with my lack of car. <laughs> what a colossal jerk. Ow, ow, ow. Mew, stop it. 
That is not on the card. Me me having to scold your cat is not on the bingo <laughs> card. Anyway, we're going to meet up with Umbra. If you remember Umbra, we met Umbra in Chapter 1, uh, the best doggo. Basically, Umbra can time travel and just kind of like warp about using his quantum physics engine uh, to basically teleport this diary back and forth between our, our fiance Luna Freya and ourselves. Um, and it's basically how we've been keeping in contact and trying to basically figure out what we're going to do next and what our next move is. Because um, right now, we're just basically trying to figure out how we can meet up and how we can kind of get Insomnia back. The bingo card is on Twitter. I can't actually see the screen to help you at the moment. Okay, so very, very, very important items we are going to buy. We need one air step sword. I need two amulets. That's it. Basically, the rest of the run is get only gets faster because of those two items. I'm going to Gina. Do you you do the same menuing right for ascension? Yeah, this is armager stuff, isn't it? Go ahead. You are on deck while I do the uh, moves. All right, so uh, this is our... I call it the Armager menu. That's how my brain remembers it. Um, we haven't really talked about Armager because it's kind of unlocked at this point. I think we've had it, but we you don't use it. You, you get it at Titan. Okay. So... Armager is, you'll see if our armor is charged, there's a ring around our screen, or, or uh, where our weapons are up in the corner. There it is, that blue circle. Gotcha. And, yep, that blue circle. So that means that it's fully charged, we can use it. Basically, when we use armor, we're kind of unleashing his full power. He um, turns Super weapons, Saiyan. <laughs> all the weapons that we've been collecting, most importantly, the, the king's weapons. Um, are kind of being used all at once uh, without using our health as a thing. So when we, we want to get some stuff to kind of buff that and use that to our advantage a little bit better. Um, and some things that we're able to do is increase how quickly we recharge that, how much damage we get from it. Um, and you also have, I think, the length of time that it lasts. Mm-hmm. And so these are all important things that are going to help us do more things with it. I never was able to implement and use, so maybe you can expand on it if I'm not. The single most important ability that we actually get in this run is the bottom right item that I got, or skill that I got, which is the last one that we menu. It is an ability called Armager Warp Chain. So back. when you activate Armager, you hit R1, L1, and uh, you go into your Super Saiyan mode. You charge up your lasers. Um, and if you hit it again, you can deplete what is left of your Armager bar into like a big ol' super-powered combo finisher called an Armager Chain. What Armager Chain Warp does is it allows us... After doing an Armager chain, the ability to have unlimited MP for roughly a minute, which is really, really handy. When you ask, well, how do you do chapter five so fast if you don't get chocobos? Here's the answer. I basically will swap over to the daggers, which I've been carrying, uh, the mage mashers, um, and... Due to very extensive testing, which I have also taken part in, the Mage Mashers combined are, over the course of a minute, are the fastest you can move in the game that is not the car or the chocobo. Um, because of how quick their animation is, and as well as a different distance covered, I did lose time there, which is dumb because force of habit, why not? Um, and you saw me go to the camera mode there. That allows us to basically we're supposed to stop there and do like this weird. Uh, I have a headache animation uh, because Gentiana, the messenger, is basically in our skull, whispering in our ear, telling us, hey, you have to go free the next god, Rama or Rama or Ramu. 
I don't know. A lot of people pronounce it differently. Um, so what we do here is I'm just literally beelining as, as in a straight line as possible. Um, I have unlimited MP, so I'm going to abuse it. And we're actually going to truck pretty quickly across this map. We had, when this started, about a little over three quarters of a mile um, to head to our destination. And I still have the Armager Warp Chain, and we're well under a third now. Um, it's great for movement. Um, literally, it's the only reason we get this skill, because it just saves so much time in Chapter 5. Uh, the other thing is it actually can save us time in chapter 13 if things go wrong and your I'm uh, sorry, chapter 12 if your damage is wrong on Death Claw. It gives you like at least a little bit of a buffer that you can kind of soak up. Uh, I'm going to judge my warp strikes here very carefully. Use the camera glitch again to get out of that kind of stalled animation. Uh, again, it doesn't seem like much, but every time I open the camera, it saves anywhere between two to five seconds, depending on the length of the dialogue that I'm ignoring. Another reminder to receive the Which again, all adds up. Things can go very sideways in this run. Missing any Things one of like the to major go sideways in this run. Yeah. Oh. Have a good night, Dad. Thanks for hanging out. Dude, it's so cool having my dad in Twitch chat. I feel I feel like such an accomplished streamer. But I hope everyone here at ESA is having a terrific time. Thank you so much for staying up late for the Europeans to hang out with me, to hang out and support the marathon, to watch this run. Uh, it's really, really cool. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, just kind of showcase my stuff, especially with a run that I've carried for three, four years now, I want to say. Anyway, we're going to warp back because we basically have... We're, we're basically at the halfway point of Chapter 5 already. It just kind of blows through real quick, uh, especially when you can just kind of literally go about a mile in a minute, which is nice. And for people who are paying attention that we use a different sword um, when we're not using Armager Warp Chain, um, that is the Air Step Sword. The biggest thing is, is when we use these Warp Strikes, it does cost mana. The air step sword, if you're using that while in the air, because you see he hops and then th does it, uh, yes. it uses half the mana cost. Yeah, so it's 15 instead of 30, which means less elixirs, which means less money, more movement without having to stop for item animation, etc., etc. This game is and actually routed very for the... tight. That one was pretty cool. Yeah, I got lucky with that. I got lucky toad. Yeah. That was a very nice uh, war point. The, the benefit of those is that that allows you to uh, get all your mana back, roll it quick and easy, and usually go a little bit further than your warp strike would have otherwise let you. If no one believes me that jumping is much faster, there is a clip in my channel. I've, I've, I think I published it on Twitter. I'd probably throw it up on YouTube. But over a 150, I believe 150 or 120 foot stretch of ground, uh, jumping is literally over a second faster than sprinting. I don't know why it is that way in this game. It just is. I'm sorry, but it's faster. Um, we'll go back to how strong the magic is. So I made this magic earlier in the chapter. It is literally one. One ice energy and 99 sheep's milk. And it's still pretty much going to one hit everything in this area. We're also coming up on a very, very somewhat technical skip. Uh, if I don't get it, I apologize. It is, sometimes it just doesn't work. Um, but for me, it's worth the risk because it saves the largest amount of time. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually be um, wiping out an entire wave of enemies and entering a little crawl space before the game even recognizes that combat is over and restarted. Uh, and that saves us a good 20 to 30 seconds and also probably one or two elixirs along the way. And something that's actually kind of interesting, I think about this skip, is there's actually a couple different ways to yeah, do it. Yeah, my, my old school safety strat. Um, he has as a, as a kind of an old school safety strat. Uh, I've seen uh, Yida Moda. Uh, yeah, I use I use Yida's this version very, now. Are you, are you using Yida's, like, just full power blow through it and make it work? <laughs> yep, just like that. Yeah, yeah. So your, your timing window for that is, like, roughly a... a just over a quarter of a second you basically have to get on that proceed point the second it opens up 
If you wait any longer, the game's like, ah, no, that's gone now. Uh, sometimes the camera will also just randomly not follow you in the right direction. And then there's no way, f like it was going to there, and there's no way to get the skip at all. Uh, Ragnarok, Hundaga, Magitech. I am, ah, my strengths decrease. Well, thanks for them carrying muscle stims. That'll cancel that out. Uh, the only bummer about doing that skip that way is you can still get status effects, be even though you're technically in an area that's non-combat because the game is still trying to figure out are you actually in combat or not. Um, so I'm going to have to... It'll be fine, though. Our, our magic's strong enough. Uh, if you want to explain how this fight works while I just focus on it, feel free. If not, I can cover it back later. I will probably miss something, but I'll try to explain most of it. Um, so part of what we're using here is, remember, we upgraded our warp strikes so that we do more damage for the amount of distance. It allows us to get a nice early hit yes. on that one for a lot of damage to get him down and vulnerable where we use magic, try to get out, take out as many of the enemies as we can as quickly as possible. That was a really good clean hit that you This saw. is very clean right now. And lots of users. So there's a problem with this game in places like this cave. Uh, as you can see, you know, kind of as a natural cave wood, there's a little bit of up and down. That's literally uh, the best big, big cave fight I've had. That was so dumb. I'm half distracted by this fight. That was, <laughs> that was literally picture perfect. I love you, Carl. So the, the cave being a little up and down and everything like that, just kind of natural progression of how the ground should be means that when you try to do these things, it doesn't always recognize that they're on the same plane as you. They might recognize them as above or below, and it doesn't always allow your hit to work. And it can cause a lot of issues. If everything goes right, you see what you just saw, where it blows by in the blink of a couple seconds. Yeah, we actually skipped two Mind Flayer spawns in that fight as well, which is yeah. really nice. Basically, the way we design how we move through the fight we avoid two spawns from happening. Anyway, this is Naga. She stole Prompto because she swore he stole his baby. One important thing I need to do is make sure my Armager bar gets completely filled here. Uh, I'm actually in, in, in a lot of risk of it not being filled by the end of this fight. Midsection, good. Nice miss. Oh, well. All right, I'm just going to eat the time loss here just to make sure we get Armager because I don't want to have to fiddly diddly around with it. It's worth it. Uh, I, well, yeah, we're gonna have to eat the um, we're gonna have to eat self destruct phase. I'm just gonna have to go for the kill. I don't know what the game is doing with these. So um, I'll explain what he was just saying here in a second. But a lot of things in this game when we're talking about saves and, and we want to eat the time, there's a lot of risk risk and reward. Um, so sometimes we can take a big risk and get big reward, and other times we need to go a little safe to be able to know that we're gonna be able to accomplish other things and you kind of push whether you want to lose time now or lose time later yeah there is uh I, I, very rarely in this game are there places where you can just straight gain or lose well there's obviously places you can gain or lose time most of the time in this game however is what i like to call shuffled so because my big room fight was really really good and i didn't have to fix anything my Armager bar was very low because I didn't do any attacks to build my Armager bar. So the downside is with that, I have to then pretty much almost every time I have to sacrifice having a what we call the quick kill on Naga because my Armager bar is depleted. Uh, I, I think, honestly, in certain cases, having to do one or two physical hits and taking a, a, like a three second slower big room is actually better. If anyone was paying close attention to the Naga fight, towards the end, her tail went up and started shaking and she stopped attacking. If you stop attacking her at that moment and just run back to the runestone, uh, she'll eventually just self-destruct. At about 10 HP, she her her attack, like Gambit or programming or whatever you want to call it, uh, is self-destruct. So she'll literally just implode. And by that point, you should be already at the... Um, you should already be at the um, the rune stone and ready to go. Anyway, we have found all the rune stones. We've unlocked Rama, uh, the big lightning boy. What's wrong, cranky bubba? 
We ought to thank the Thunder God for buying this. Oh, my wife lost her vape. I thought she was getting mad. Uh, all right, here's another one for the bingo card. Uh, I, I do a lot of 3D printing, and today I decided to paint my full-size Victorious Treaty that's about seven and a half feet long, so it's just kind of sitting on the floor because I don't really have anywhere else to put it. Uh, it's, our apartment is very small, and it's a seven and a half foot long sword, so I don't really know what to do with it until I basically finish painting it and hang it up on the wall. TV cosplay win, bro. There, there, I, 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 I did chat's work for them. Lowered expectations. I don't think I have any <laughs> mad TV references. I love you too, Danny. The Flyers are still better than the Bruins. Anyway, so this is the only part that kind of has a little bit of RNG attached to it with the movement. You'd think movement RNG in a game with random encounters? No, Kios, what are you talking about? How is it possible? Well, uh, we're about to introduce you to two of my favorite characters in the game, Adam and Steve. <laughs> but they're kind of shy and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of moving parts that affect who and if they show up adam and steve are two bulets living happily on the side of this uh this this hill over here um they're bulets they're in love they're just doing their thing enjoying their life but i'd much rather prefer to meet them as a pair um adam is the more earthy toned uh, of the Buellettes. And Steve is the much brighter colored. Steve's, Steve is very, very confident and fashion forward. Um, so what happens with these two fine Buellettes is I need them for an encounter so I can do Warp Strike. It looks like I only got Adam today, and that's a bummer because I can't use the Armager Warp Chain on just Adam. What happens is Adam has a 90% chance to drop a Buellette Shank, which is good food. You can use it a lot in this game. It's in quite a few recipes that are pretty handy. The bad news is it stops us for 10 seconds while Armager Warp Chain is active for Ignis to tell us, that's it, I've come up with a new recipe. Then Gladio has to chime in with something that also loses us time. Oh, I'll be your taste tester. Um, so instead, I'm gonna have to just kind of slow myself down a little bit here and hopefully trigger an encounter with some boar teeth generally show up right around here but it looks like i'm gonna get really bad luck and just not get anything uh so that is a bummer pretty much every second i move forward i'm losing an additional like half a second well not too bad it's not super efficient but it's not as bad as nothing and it's definitely way better than just hitting the garuda garulas at the end of this area um but basically our current objective right now is we need to go to the archaeal stronghold um there is uh, basically a Imperial base that was set up here. Um, and we're, we're gonna go pay them a visit. You know, just see how they're doing. Perhaps maybe reallocate some of their inventory. <laughs> Mismanage some expense reports. We're gonna hide their staplers. Or, you know, just maybe destroy the entire area. I don't know why I swapped like that, but hey, this is fine. Yeah, we love Adam and Steve. Um, Adam and Steve is the most efficient because honestly, they're right there. You can just attack them both. You you just armor your warp chain one of them, which, which eliminates them from battle. But because you run away from the battle, for some reason, Ignis doesn't count it as a total victory. <coughs> So you you can be, you'll basically still get a Buellette Shank. You just kind of skip the whole. That's it. Come up with a new recipe. Um, we are going to camp here because that's what the game is going to tell us to do. Very important. I mentioned food uh, earlier. Also, tell me if you had a really cool dinner. We'll talk about food once I get really bored with this run. Uh, I'm going to eat something very special. It is the plump and pungent tofu. The main effect of this dish is an ability called Last Stand. I love you, Ice. I hope you and the fam are well. Um, what Last Stand does is it basically cuts our HP by 90%, but gives us tremendous stat boosts in exchange for it. And I mean tremendous. Spit my tongue. That was awful, awful and awkward. 
I was wondering what that sound was. Yeah, do the <laughs> give you give you the uh, the hamster from the Japanese television. Anyway, uh, this game is going to introduce us to our first stealth section. As an RPG, well, as anyone that plays video games, when stealth is optional, we do what? Ignore it. Correct. Very good. Even if it means leaving the task unfinished, we withdraw before we overstay our welcome. Uh, if we have the car generally and we can fast travel, it's faster, but this is the only chapter where we currently don't have the car. So I'm kind of stuck with what I got, and that's abusing the game's mechanics. Although, honestly, I really can't think of another reason why they would give you free MP as an ability. You know? Is someone is someone has to until then hold position anyway so the game's gonna be like hey Three, you can get some extra ap here if you're two, just real stealthy like and i'll be like one. okay <laughs> and that just alerts the guards there there's a free bingo space for everybody as well um but i'm just gonna warp strike right through here in some of the other runs that i do you'll actually see me take that because it is actually it's like 10 or 15 i think it's 10 ap which is a lot in the game. Just it's like one of those things you don't have to rest to get AP. You accumulate it whenever you accumulate it. And as it turns out, the way I routed level one Omega Aura, I need that 10 AP right about now because my magic otherwise stat is a little bit low. Everyone should understand how to use plate reverb on their microphone if they have the ability to just for stupid jokes like that. I still refuse. Seems good. It's gone. It so anyway, he tells us to be stealthy, to which again I respond. Uh, All right. <laughs> to the shadows. Right. So I'm going to get this first sneaky kill and oh wait, there's guys right there. Well, all right, we're going to give up on this. There <laughs> is a bit of a coding issue with this game at this particular spot. I'm just going to use it to entirely warp over one of the walls and avoid a cutscene. Um, we used to avoid the cutscene another way by basically very slowly hugging the wall. But uh, we can just warp strike over it. That's a lot faster. <laughs> yeah, I got him on the double. Y'all, I, I caught y'all sleeping. You thought, oh, he did it once. Haha, -ha, very funny. Nah, dude. Doubles. Double tap for safety. I'm going to be surprised if that's the only one. I can get out my Vuvuzela. No. Anyway, no. hey, look, it's another mech fight. These are so dang. Oh, wait, never mind. No, they're not. <laughs> also, you notice we're doing max damage. I'm like level 15 and doing max damage. Uh, that's how strong that uh, food we ate is. I'm also going to try and get through this uh, area really quickly and push back. Uh, I want these enemies to line up in a very particular pattern. Uh, I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to get it. Mm, missed the last three. I can save about four or five seconds. If that, uh, if I was able to get these last couple of stragglers before that cutscene activated, for some reason the cutscene will not transfer damage, but it lets the damage play out. It's rather strange, uh, but that's not super inefficient. I didn't check drops. I know you probably didn't either, so it'll be a surprise I for us later. Uh, I know that I'm two. I'm at least two two right now, so. I have enough Magitech booster for 165 Aranea. Barring Squibcast, we're we're pretty safe. Uh, even if Squibcast, I've been practicing some old school and basically brand new strats for Chapter Eight uh, in case I have to use Armiger strats on Aranea, which is like my extreme worst case scenario backup. Um, but yeah, so the rest of this area, I really don't actually have to interact with anything or anyone. Uh, just gonna get myself out of battle real quick. And we're going to learn about these Magitech generators. So these Magitech generators right here, uh, not that mech, which I'm not even going to bother fighting because I can't break his weak point because he doesn't really have one that's easy. So I'm just going to go behind him and break the generator instead. Uh, this brings down the shield from the base. And now, because we have made a pact with Rama, guess who's going to clear the base for us? That's right. Big angry Thunder Daddy is here. And he is mad. He's sending everyone into timeout. Nice reflex enhancer drop there. I think that's two. That pull always gets in my way. Uh, so I do not have enough reflex enhancers. It's going to have to be Magitech booster. Drops have just been unlucky. 
turns. Uh, expect slightly slower chapter 13 movement, uh, or well, chapter 14 movement. Potential slowdown for Cerberus, Armon. I'll probably have, well, I'll at least have one for Armon at least, uh, which is the most efficient place to use that one. Anyway, we're all done with uh, this. Mello, you probably, if you have anything to, to stack up or if anyone wants to get their donation read, probably have about five or 10 minutes before I have like a little break that we can kind of sneak it in. Uh, but yeah, this is, that was chapter five infiltration. Should be pretty good. I'm going to make my way all the way back to where we started really quick because I have like this dialogue. Grab that extra muscle stimulant because basically every, every muscle stimulant is extra for me. And that's it. Congratulations. Perfectly timed. I landed right where I needed to be as the dialogue ended. And just because we have our car back now, instead of taking it for a nice joy ride, fast travel. Uh, the other thing is you always need to make sure you have at least 10 gil here. Otherwise, you can't fast travel. I have lost a run to this because I have completely flummoxed myself and literally didn't have anything I could possibly sell. It, the only thing I think I could have sold was like a Magitek booster, but it would have basically not given me enough magic for chapter six. So I had to like, I had to sell off an elixir or something, but I had to kind of figure out how to, um, what to go with it. No more than we need. <sighs> All right, so back to town. The only thing I need to grab is an Iris photo, and there is a possibility for Aranea photo in Chapter 6. We should get the Iris photo, obviously, just because we drive, and there's generally the one of her on the hotel bed right before we wrap up the uh, like the, the first you know stopping point halfway there. All right, Mello. Still awake over there, buddy? You need me to, uh, you need me to keep going? No, no, no. Yeah, I... I so you said in about five to ten minutes we'll have a right nice about now. run or I, I over calculated i am so sorry i i did my american yeah like five ten minutes which is anywhere between with me a minute One and an hour oh. yeah <laughs> anywhere between five seconds and whenever i actually remember <laughs> right now <laughs> um yes we do have a donation from rj smangit donates five dollars and they say five five dollar five dollar ferret hype long. no ferret hype oh yeah that's better than five dollar foot long yeah. would you would you mind reminding everybody what the what rj's talking about here with the ferret hype uh so if we can hit 25k by uh pretty much before the end of the run uh the last real break i have is uh the drive back to hammerhead so what's the current what's the time we're at currently um right now 155 yeah, 155 and wow, that's great pace. Like, actually, really good pace. Yeah. Um, so you have about two hours to hit um, 25K, and I'll bring the ferret on stream for a little bit. Maybe, maybe if I can do it without causing too much of a ruckus, we have a ball pit for the ferret. Yeah, we just we have just over $700 to hit that 25 grand mark. Um, I think we could do that within the next two hours. I mean, we've raised... I think it's doable. Probably more than that since the run started. I, uh, look, I haven't roped any other speedrunners into terrible ideas yet. Although, RJ runs Omori, which is a pretty neat game. I, I was looking into that one. That's pretty cool. Anything else for me? Or do you want me to just float on? Uh, well, here, let me talk about Alzheimer Fondant again real quick. Um, you have just like a you know, minute and a half. Okay, yeah. So again, <clears throat> for those that haven't heard this before, we are here donating money towards Alzheimer Fondant. Alzheimer Fondant is the Swedish national fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. Um, Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. On average, a person with Alzheimer's lives four to eight years after diagnosis, but can live as long as 20 years depending on other factors. So again, all donations go to Alzheimer Fondant. Um, to date right now, we've, we've raised uh, $24,282 $24, um, towards that, that um, charity, and it's such a good cause. Everything that comes in for now and for the next few days is going towards that as well. And you have a chance to win some wonderful prizes in the form of two ViewSonic monitors um, for a minimum donations of $25 or $35. Cumulative 
you enter yourself with, for a chance to win both of those monitors. So say you've donated $10 a few days ago. Well, if you donate another 25 now, boom, you're now able to win both monitors. I'm just letting you know, you can go to prizes.esamarathon.com to read more about what you can win. Wow, are they that bad? Not bad at all, right? Right. But there's no way the big guy's taking any chances with his little sister in the car. Uh, yeah, Alzheimer's uh, is, is horrible. I uh, lost my grandfather to it quite a few years ago. It's definitely, definitely a horrible, horrible thing to have to watch someone go through. I literally do not recommend it. Literal zero out of ten. Um, so thank you again, everyone who's hanging out here, uh, having fun with us, keeping, keeping it, keeping it light, keeping it friendly. Uh, you know, even if you're not, even if you can't donate, you know, it's still cool to be a part of this cause and, you know, share it. If you have social media or host it, if you have a Twitch channel, just, just get the word out there. I got some yeah, Nico, um, big comfy. Oh. See if I can give you an update on the bid incentive here. Yeah, let me know what we got. Relax. I'm gonna go ahead and guess Iris is winning. Iris is up probably by like a hunch. Iris is winning with $395, and Prompto is in second with $313.90. So if you would like to snipe with Arnea or Cindy or whoever, or Ignis is currently sitting at zero dollars. I can't. There's zero no. Ignis love right now. <laughs> no love because, for my boy. That's because Anochi's asleep. I'll need you to wait here. Or even Gladio with the with the ripped buttons off of his shirt. Zero dollars as well. I suggest we reveal our intelligence. That's okay. The best part about that incentive is you literally have until like about four minutes before the run ends to get it. Yep. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Remember, when you, whenever you make a donation, you can apply it towards one of these names, and you know, hopefully we can see a snipe in the next couple hours here. What about bingo status? Anybody got bingo yet? No. Man, I gotta, I gotta turn up the heat on my commentary. I guess. You've got. Uh, on one card. One card, I think, is within one square. If I, if my one mental. One card. There's two squares. Um, that like two different ways you could get a bingo on either of those. Like there's, there's two that are at four, and then there's another card that's at a at a four. Uh, there's that card is just all over the place, and that one's barely hit any. Good, good. This is good. Well, I will be I will be stepping away to make tea after we finish this little infiltration mission. Uh, so this mission is also a stealth mission. So say it along with me, chat. What are we gonna do if the game offers us stealth? Ignore it. No, you'll actually game over. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost runs to this. Okay, it's the most embarrassing Everyone has thing lost ever. Runs to this. this is Failing, failing this challenge is like peeing your pants in public and then just screaming that you've done it aloud. And then, like, it's it's just awful. Everyone stares at you and they're just like, Sag. Anyway, we're about to beat the best girl in the game. I mainly like her because she calls me pretty. My wife calls me pretty, too. She calls me cute. This cannot be born. Such behavior be smart. I think she's playing Animal I Crossing. Call your wife right cute. My wife is cute. We turn into Salad Snake, correct? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> so good. I apologize. I'm not supposed to be looking at chat, but it also helps me kind of figure out a couple of things that I've missed along the way. This is like this is just a run where there is a lot of downtime. Uh, I haven't really tried convincing anyone in chat to run this yet. But uh, for if you have the desire and say, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to speed run uh, like an action RPG or a Final Fantasy. I recommend this one. To be honest, there's a lot of like it's it's not too high up on the skill tree. Even at the at the higher levels, there's there's a couple of things you got to learn. But for the most part, it's it's pretty safe. It's pretty consistent. Like there's generally no way you can actually lose a run to this. With that, like if you prepare enough, like. Unlike what I do, because I'm literally grinding off fractions of a second, there's no way you can lose a run. It's just not possible. 
Um, it's very easy to get into. Uh, I've made, I think I'm going, going to be making my fourth updated tutorial, video tutorial guide with inputs, with commentary, with notes. It, it's just all the resources are there. It's very easy. It's very friendly. The community is friendly. It's, it would, it would be a great place to start. And I, I will say as somebody who really enjoys it, when you're getting started, you also don't need to worry as much about like the manual driving stuff. So it gives you all of these little sections where it's a really good spot to stop. Let me check my notes. Let me see where things are at. And you have get up, a really stretch, good... have a, I, I've like literally cooked full course meals like for like in the middle of these runs. Yep. Okay. 165 it is. Toe in the line. Yeah. So it's just, it's really, really nice way to kind of get into uh, some of these runs if you're interested in it. I actually started, I started speed running this game before I actually finished it casually. Shout outs to the Final Fantasy uh, Relay. <laughs> hey, you signed <laughs> up that you could do this. I see that you actually have a time on the leaderboards. Yeah, I do. What's everyone else's time? About five and a half hours. Okay, cool. So I just need to shave two hours off my run. Got it. I have a month. Sure. Ran it every day. Yeah. Um, and then you never stopped. Oh, Google, no. Shh. Google. Ugh. Any, any whomstiv. Uh, so I guess we have time if, the, if you have a donation you want to sneak in or if chat has any questions. Uh, now's a good time because literally this is an auto scroller. I'm just waiting for um, Caligo to catch up with us. Yeah, pretty much. There's like dialogue we're missing and he's talking about Aranea and Ravis and uh, the, the Chancellor. Yeah, I'll definitely say uh, if if you want a chance to have your donation read, now is a great time to get them in. We have got a lot of good things to donate for. You can donate towards uh, the final photo incentive. Um, right now, you have a very close race between Iris and Prompto. And again, donating gets you a, a chance to enter. To, I'm sorry, you enter for a chance to win um, one of two wonderful monitors from ViewSonic. We are still looking for some fun things to read. Give me something to quote. Give me, give me something you want to hear me say. <laughs> That's what I appreciate about you. There you go. There's a Letter Kenny reference quote. There. This game runs Four. on RTA. The only one that and, doesn't uh, is PC. PC runs load removed. We have an anonymous donation for $50. Thank you so much. Hey. And the comment is, I've come up with a new donation. <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> do, do you want to put your, uh, your, your Ignis voice on for that one and give it a second shot? Uh, I don't know if I have an Ignis voice. I'll, well, that's you know it. What? I've come up with a donation. Gotcha. Okay, let's try that again. That's it. I've come up with a new donation. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, hey, hey, perfectly timed too, because we're about to. Now's your chance, doctor. We're about to grab Now's this dude. Mind. He can't see us, and we're gonna get him from behind. Even though we work from the front, we're just gonna get him from behind anyway. <laughs> I got the uh, that's this is the the short portal two speed run I've done in the middle of it. <laughs> Look, I don't make the rules; I just enforce them. Okay. <laughs> I should literally like just give myself credit for that quote and just like put it on a T-shirt or something. Anyway, hey, look, uh -huh. it's a very very dangerous mech, and it's got a rocket launcher. All right, this fight's over already. See ya. To be honest, the most important thing you can learn in this speedrun is honestly just how to fight mechs. Like it, once you learn how to fight the mechs, it's it's so pretty much there's really no other like super ridiculously hard tech to learn. It's it's true uh, cuz it's it's getting cuz you just start with your teleport to your rocket launcher and then it's not it's showing some restraint cuz like your your instinct is I want to just wail on the back, but if you do it too much, you will cause more problems for yourself. All right. So this should be okay. It could potentially spiral out of control very, very rapidly, depending on how lucky I am right now. All right. Four left. We're good for chapter seven speed. 
All right, hope this works. Two, three, four, five. Looks great. Didn't even need to warp strike. The warp no. strike was just insurance. So it's that's Aranea fight. And again, this is why magic, you can only cast it once every 30 seconds. <laughs> so chapter six, pretty much the boss of chapter six, and we killed her with one cast of, of lightning. No food buffs. The only thing I was carrying was two amulets and a little bit of extra magic buff from what I had in my inventory. The other thing I don't think we've really touched on is uh, a lot of times you'll see me swapping around and putting different items in my inventory. I've also had the axe sitting in the right uh, in the right inventory slot, and you've yet to see me use it the entire run. I will never use it in the run ever unless it's a complete accident. But the reason we have it in there is because it gives us, I believe, 60 strength. So it's it's one of the biggest buffs we can get out of an equipped item. So it just sits there. Ooh, Iris said a bad word. That's reason number five. I don't like her. She's got a potty mouth. Mind if I hang in your guys' room for a bit? Uh, and anybody that was hoping for Squibcast uh, to get that bingo, sorry, it didn't yeah. happen. Yeah. See that? I put Squibcast on a very potentially easy to fill. Uh, here, we'll give you all a second one you can pick because I know I'm going to get stuck with this horrible woman. Good <laughs> morning. Does, does suffering like count as plot? I like sibling plot? photo. I really like that sibling photo. All right, so if anyone needs to go to the bathroom like I do, there you go. I have. Um, or it needs a beverage or anything like that, I recommend a good stretch. I'm going to turn on the hot water, and I am going to walk away. If that's okay with you, Mallow. Do you need me to do anything? No, like no, yeah, way? absolutely. Stay hydrated. Okay. Anyone want some tea while I'm gone? I'll take me? a cup of tea. Hey, all right, well. I got some tea. Bubba, you want tea? You should be glad you didn't. Yeah, the Loki guy was not. This is a great point if you've got anything. Otherwise, I can try and talk about or answer questions. Um, yeah. Well, if there's any questions, now might be a good time for to answer some of those. Maybe we'll get the chance to find out. I do have chat up if you guys have any particular questions about the run. Um, because at this point in time, we're basically doing our longest driving section. Um. We have to get all the way down to the coast to try to catch a boat. Um, and everybody who we met up with previously in the Stalem is supposed to be there waiting for us, uh, except for Iris didn't want to ride with them because it was going to be cramped. So she's riding with us. Because, I guess, reasons. Um, if you actually are playing this casually and you stop anywhere in here and, and actually play through sections, you can get Iris as a uh, fifth party member. Um, so she actually will uh, fight in and join with them. Is this run still valid? Yes. Uh, Kios actually does ha or did have a world record um, at one point in time for... Um, Taking a bathroom break in the middle of the run. Hey. Thoughts on Final Fantasy 16? I am always open to new ideas. Why is the horn still going? That's a good one. So, uh, Kios actually is still has his wireless controller with him as he's up and moving around. Um, and so he is actually honking the horn so that he can hear it. Because uh, that tells him when certain things have happened. Like, as you saw, we stopped there. And it had a, a prompt. Because the horn stopped honking during that period of time, that told him that it was time for that button for us, so he could hit the button and then continue honking the horn to continue uh, being able to get an eye on what's going on. Because I think... I, I sometimes get this wrong. I want to say that there's uh, two stops that pop up, but it could be three. 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 Amelin, Thicket, Bayside, and I forget what the last one is. So. It's right at the end of the no one ever of that. That's it. Because no one ever had little sister so yeah, the horn is honking as 100% a legit strip. Uh, so did we address why magic does ludicrous damage? So it's a little bit of magic is overpowered in this game in general, but also we kind of boost our magic based on what items we combine with it. But when we're mixing all of this magic, we're mixing different items with it. 
so that we can get different effects. What we really go for is the highest power and also like multiple casts. So quaint cast, quad cast. We do have some dual casts, but a lot of it is we want it to, to hit as many times as possible and do lots and lots of damage. Um, one thing that can happen outside of the first, so when you say quad cast, outside of that first hit, those other casts have a chance to miss. So we want to have more casts possible so that we, if one misses, we still get lots of hits. Sometimes more miss than one, and it doesn't create a very fun moment. Wow, look at that bridge up ahead. <laughs> Some piece of work out there. The rivers run wide out here, so the bridges run long. Guess I'll see it when we. I didn't hear you. He's talking about uh, the percentage chain. But only one have gotten to a location first. So we're driving right now because we're going to a location we have not visited. I still didn't hear you. Oh, were you, uh, were you, I think you were talking about the chain percentage. I kind of rushed past it quickly, but. Oh, oops, that's a mistake. Anyway, any lag reducing strats? Uh, throw a solid state drive in your PS4, yeah. bro. Yeah. Or get a PS5. I mis mismangled that one. But yeah, so what if to to tap back on what Alfina was saying, um, <clears throat> there is no 100% cast in this game. Best you can get is 99. So what would have happened if we got that 1% chance on the second cast, uh, we would have only had one magic cast on Aranea, and I would have had to come up with the remaining 35,000 damage. That's yep. what we call a squib cast, and it's uh, kind of a uh, annoying thing that happens. Too early for seaside supermodels. We don't talk about seaside supermodels because I am the exception to the rule. Still mad about it. Well, don't mess it up today. I didn't mess it up last time. I have to go back. I did not mess it up. You're gonna. You're. I. I. Discovered the strat. What's up? <laughs> I'm the one who made the strat. So something kind of interesting that you're about to see here. Uh, we're going to be kind of walking and talking with Cindy. Except for instead of actually walking with her, we're going to jump in circles around her. It just for some reason forces her to like go into a running animation. None of us have really figured out why. Like. It's just something that we all kind of just like, we were trying to figure out ways to do it. And I think it was Rudy that maybe just started jumping in circles around her because he was bored. Then we noticed, well, when you do that, she sometimes just will start like jogging or like full tilt running for whatever reason. So instead of really trying to figure out what exactly it is, we just do this because, well, I really don't have time to deal with it. It's probably some sort of weird conjunction of how close Ignis is or where the rest of the party is or... You know, something like that. So we do actively try to keep Ignis out of her way as he will cause uh, traffic damage. Perfect. Stopped her right, like literally right where I wanted. Hey, our house is over here, right this way. Thanks, Talcott, who's awfully cheery for his grandpa having been murdered like a couple days ago. He is a kid trying to make the best of his situation. He's got some smart shoes for a kid and gray hair. Just give us a second. Uh, okay. I'll be inside then. Sorry about that. One of my, uh, one of my web, not web pages, but one of my accounts just decided to log itself out and is now demanding I load back in. Oh, of course. That's how these things work. It's, it's one of the, websites that starts with a G. I can't say it, otherwise everyone's phones will go off. <laughs> Galexa? No. Uh, gargoyles. Uh. I forgot to look for a picture of Aranea. That's fine. I'll get one in Chapter 7. I forgot to remind you, and I'm sorry. So it's right okay. there, tells us that he is uh, leaving. 
actually had a quick glance. I don't think you had one. I don't think I had one. That fight honestly was too quick. We should, we realistically should get one. And if I don't, well, then we literally got a tenth of a percentage bad luck here. And I apologize. And I don't know. We can, we can, we'll make it up somehow. The waterfall cave was right There's a, there is a very, 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 very ever so small chance that you might not be able to get a photo of Aranea. It, I've literally had it happen twice in about a thousand attempts of this game that have made it that far. So generally it's a safe bet, but a lot of times this game likes to make me look like a fool. Wait. What Basically every chance. Pure pure get in yeah, in any, in any way, shape, form possible that it can. For us, as if our anyway, for those of you that are very tired of driving in the car, don't worry. This is the last time we have the car. Because I'm not a very punny person. Do you see me? Do I look do I do I look like a clown? Do I look funny? Nah, honestly, I just wasn't smart enough to think about it. I was more upset with the fact that I forgot to grab a photo or look for a photo of Aranea there. <clears throat> Please don't. The last time I did it, it was like a full case. Everybody I don't need that much. <laughs> Actually, mine is not hooked up to any of my purchasing accounts. I used to have a bit of a problem with drinking and shopping. So so I had to safety proof myself on that one. Anyway, I just um, felt like stopping the car here because there's 10,000 gill sitting on the side of the road. Yep. Buried treasure. Also, so then, I'm just going to uh, run this way. That parking job actually does have a couple things, not just the fact that there's 10,000 gil just sitting on the side of the road, but if you guys notice, as we were parking the car, the red, there's a red bar at the top of the screen indicating that we were about to be in an encounter. Everything in order. Yeah. Because we ran off in that direction before warping back to the car, we are no longer about to start an encounter. It despawns it. Oh, Ooh, early prompto. I need to manually make this turn, so I'm not going to have as much time to menu. I think not. Oh, man. Also, I got to put the jams back on. You know what? We'll do orbital instability for SNES. Shoutouts to the Twitch's hottest husband, SNES today. Another thing you can do is just in the middle of driving is you can just pop in the menu real quick. Like... I got to make some magic really quick, so I may as well do it now. The other reason is I actually have to buy more sheep's milk after I finish selling off the rest of everything else here. I'm going to change my equipment here while I can because it'll actually end up saving us just a little bit of time if I do this now. Depending on the timing of Prompto's uh, prompt there, uh, conversation prompt there, sometimes we do have to do this menu, the second half of this menu when we get uh, the car stopped because you can still access the shop without being in the car, but just like reaching in the back seat, kind of an idea. It, it just all depends on when Prompto uh, interrupts us. Today we had it early, so we actually, you know, deal with, are we gonna make sure we make the turn? Thanks, holding, Prompto. Holding six, going 20. So I am way, way overstocked for any eventuality here. That's what I thought. Uh, looks like we will have Armager for Chapter 8 unless... I, I don't know. Armager for Chapter 8, poss yeah, pretty much guaranteed at this point. Uh, I also skip Hard Edge here because really it's just not worth the menuing. I, especially if I'm rocking like 5 Muscle Stim. Or I think I have 4 Muscle Stim still currently. With your items, you should be fine. Yeah. Ooh, Lucky. Lucky Point Warp saves me the uh, Elixir animation. Sometimes we get lucky crossing the swamp. I never get lucky, but that, 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 I always have that, that point warp is so. very, very rare to get. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, it just is not a very common point warp that shows up. I'd say probably like less than a 10% chance. So whenever I get it, it's always like a very exciting moment. Gentle. All right, my tea is definitely oversteeped. And over here, we meet up with Arden again. It's gonna, gonna warp strike myself into a wall. Excuse me. 
Look, the camera changes direction in this game for literally we don't know why. But like, whenever you go into a cutscene, you definitely come out facing a different direction like every single time. And it's not a predictable direction. No, it, it never is. The only one I can kind of get is the um, the the Lestalum Market in Chapter Three, and my roll direction to talk to. Which one is it here? Is it Wigs or Bedge? Recruit. What tea do I have? It is a mango green rubibos by Ito N, uh, mixed with a little bit of their hibiscus. Get a little bit, a little bit of flair, and kind of keep my throat well, well moisturized tonight. I just have water. I did a lot of spray painting and sanding bondo today, so like my, my, even despite wearing a face mask, my, uh, my, uh, my throat is a little bit agitated. You know, fine particulate matter. Kind of hey, I just remember. I'm happy I remember to actually exercise today. Very nice. I did as yeah. well. Why not head inside and, look and I also remember to buy the sheep's milk that I sometimes often forget to buy, and then I curse myself, and then I end up fixing it and almost PBing anyway. So, to get into this dungeon that we're going into, it has to be after or evening, I think is what it is. It's yeah. Evening or night. Um, so, when you first get here, if you guys noticed, it was day. It was like early morning kind of a thing and they yeah, were like I think, I think it's like uh, 9 or 10 a.m yeah so we really can't get in but we talked you can either like wander around the swamp or because it's a speed run you can talk to i forgot which one we talked to uh what color was their outfit that's the part i don't remember their outfit was white so that would make them big correct bigs ah. and wedge are very easily discernible here even if you don't want to remember their faces uh, Biggs wears white, Wedge wears black. So they're um, inverse black and white. So, I, of I often forget which one is which. That I almost I made Big Boo Boo, but I fixed Big Boo Boo. I had wrong magic equipped. Ah. I fixed Big Boo Boo, because I made Big Boo Boo in last PB, I think. Ah. So, um, by talking to Biggs, we basically say, I want to wait here till, till nightfall, and, and then all of a sudden, ta-da, it's nightfall, and you can go in the dungeon. Um, now again, Gladi is not with us, so Arnea comes and joins us for all these things. And there's a couple interesting skips here. Take yep, we got a bunch second. of them, but also look at how cool that is. Oh, I'm, I'm straight trucking at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm grooving. I'm in that zone. Okay. Um, I'm definitely in my zone. There are no Kanye West references, because I don't like Kanye West. What do you think it is? Nice. So we learn a lot more about RNA in here as well from her. Because uh, last time when we were learning about her, it was from somebody else who has a lot of complaints about her. And now we kind of get to learn more about her, more about the Empire, kind of some more things what's going on. And it's all really well done just in conversation. Bridge skip. Just skip a very nice encounter there. Yep. And it's just well time jumping over the bridge crumbling. There's actually a skip that you can do for rebuilding this bridge, and I actually have the setup for it right now, but to be honest, I'm not going to. We're actually going to bring okay. out the sword that we got in Chapter 4 just to showcase this. Uh, okay, all right. Well, the game's going to give me the business for some reason. Uh, I'm just going to muscle stem my way out of this. I have no idea what that was, so I'm not sure if we count that as weird graphical glitch or that that's never happened before, but that's just not what's supposed to happen there at all. Um, it, it, it targeted and buffered away, and then I retar like reconfirmed target, and then I was like, "Nah, dude." But if you if you kill the 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 uh, creme brulees and the iron giant in the correct order, and are able to get up to the point warp, which is right above this door we just entered, uh, you are able to skip that animation. I don't think There's we put song. a. Um, that's never happened before on the on the car. It's a marathon. I when when have I done a marathon where that's never happened before? Hasn't happened before. Cool. I was just gonna throw out there if anybody would like to uh, replace uh, Barbie's bird appears with that's never happened before. If you have that on your card, please feel free to do so. Just punishing Since, uh, me. Barbie was not able to make us do two power. Uh, dual cast there. 
again, this is a lot of a lot of not super expensive or super hard magic to make, and we're just applying it properly. Um, I know there's like a lot of complaints about the magic system. I think it makes for a perfectly balanced game, to be very frank, because it's so so easy to abuse the magic in this game. So I definitely think that the fact that they balance it with like, hey, you can't just like go on and you know destroy everything because realistically if there wasn't a cooldown on this i just use magic for everything because it's so much faster yeah uh, oops wrong menu it's caused us to really think about when we use magic what magic we use balancing out where in the fight we want to use it now big magic uh, muscle stim. You know, I'm not going to use it here. If it runs out, it runs out. Uh, this position looks great. I'm going to probably miss the lich behind me, though. Bam, bam. Yeah, I missed it. That's a problem. Oh, well. I'll just double back for extra damage into the vulnerable. Just like that. All right. Next. This is a pretty consistent skip for the most part. I'm not going to jinx it. I have missed it. Um, the only theory I have on to why this works is maybe just the way the dungeon is set up. That was questionable. We'll see if we get away with it. Um, but if you stay close enough here, uh, you'll notice that the enemies that we cross are still up on the bridge. And I now have to fight the worst enemy in the game. It's invisible. It's the ghost Quetzalcoatl. Uh, actually, it just doesn't spawn. For whatever reason, if you hug the left wall here, the boss just doesn't spawn. You still get the cutscene. You still get, like, the dust and the animation and the physics. Uh, but no enemy. So we fought our fought our little ghosty-wosty friend. And uh, that's that's it. Uh, I am short Armiger. I honestly don't think I can get it. So I'm just going to use the old, old reliable strat which is okay. elixir proof. You might get it. No. Depending on it's, how things go in the uh, uh not really. I mean, I could I could I could maybe finish with it, but it's I I don't think it's enough. I will. Am okay. I going to am I going to annoy um anyone in chat when i say that my record for finishing pitios is one minute and 57 seconds no pitios references on the bingo card i now have shoulder cat Andor is asleep on the love seat well, somebody wants to be fed, and she has to wait until the end of the run, so... Okay, so there should be a picture of Aranea here. Should. There's our girl. She's looking mighty fine. Um, and we got a picture of Cindy at the beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah. First one. If not, I can. I'll just grab the the one in chapter eight. Yeah, I'd grab it for safety. But that should be everybody then. Yes, yes. Rise and shine, Prince Charming. We're here. So the way the pictures work, because I've seen a couple of things pop up in chat about it. Um, I haven't found sure a way to, to manually. Well, I think you have to get it's actually a skill in order to to lock it down. Yep. You can get a um, you can spend points in, of your AP into Prompto to be able to actively take photos. Otherwise, Prompto is just supposedly randomly taking photos throughout the whole thing, and you're getting kind of a luck of the draw onto what photos exist. Um, we're just trying to make sure that we take an extra couple seconds and grab them. Mm -hmm. I've, I've put enough time into this game. I'm somewhere in the area of about 1,500 hours worth of runs with this game that I have 
pretty consistently through all speeds and mistakes or gold splits, figured out which photos pretty consistently show up to the point where I can almost kind of guess what photos I get during each chapter based on like certain damage movements and such like that. And I'm actually going to do half of the menu to set us up for chapter nine. Just wanted to thank you for offering to clear out those demons. Anyway, we are, uh, if anyone remembers, we don't have Gladio. He left. Um, he had to go take care of some dude that only has one arm as opposed to like six or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to meet up with another hunter here. This is our first time working with another hunter. Um, I'm not going to open the menu because it'll slow it down, but that actually tells you who the hunter is. Um, if you can't figure it out, um, we're going to be paired up with a very, very large hunter with a deep gravelly voice. So, you might back up. I thought we who uses um, these two-handed... Anyway, yeah, he sounds familiar. It's funny, if I try and use any of his skills, he has, he has the same skill that Gladio had. That's weird. Super weird. He's very much a take charge kind of guy for some reason. Oh, yeah. Oof. All right. You know what? I'm just going to go for this. This actually is going to work out pretty nicely. So, um, in this area, we're fighting two different enemies. There are goblins and there are. I mess up their name every time. Garcia Macera. Garcia Macera. Yep. Looks like we're doing OG strats here. So, goblins. Die pretty much in one hit, no worries, no big deal. You warp strike to them, they go down. Arsene Asira's are not so nice. Um, you can see he opened up with a, a fire magic trying to destroy those Arsene Asira's. Sometimes it works That's and it. sometimes We're done. it doesn't because they will occasionally run out of the, uh, the magic. All of them? Think so. This has been a very really action nice run and they, they did a good job of staying in the cast so that they actually got hit by it because they dodge in weird ways. So. Look, all, I, all I'm going to say is that was clean. And if you haven't played this game since it came out, just give it a shot. Like, literally give it a shot. I've convinced a lot of people, a lot of fellow speedrunners, to so just just play this game casually. Give it a shot. Give it like 10, 15 hours and just see what it's like now that it's all, you know, patched up and runs a lot better. And I haven't had any of them come back and say I don't like it. I mean, I know it's cool to hate, but like just, just give it a shot. Trust me. If I didn't like this game, I wouldn't spend 1,500 hours doing it. Same thing with Nier Automata. I have almost 2,000 hours in our game. This, is, this game's probably actually closer to 2,000 now that I've been back running it again. Yeah. I'm not getting, I'm not getting mad either. We just chilling. But yeah, I, the, the, running a game for so long, I, I've, I've heard everything about this game, how it's so horrid. Don't get me wrong. When I played this game day one, it was... Boy, there was... Uh, it was a video game. In uh, in the fact that you put it into a, uh, a a console and it played videos, Ooh, never. Uh, one of our one of our earlier earlier members, um, I forget who it was off the top of my head. Recently, just for the anniversary of the game, did a like completely depatched the game and did a like a day one unpatched speed run of it, and it was like four hours slower just because of all like the. The horrible mechanics and how you couldn't skip like half of the cutscenes you can skip now and you can't skip the train rides and stuff like that it was hilarious i watched some of it and i was like man i remember the struggle this was because this went from like a oh man i have to like set aside pretty much a whole day for this if i have to reset somewhere along the way like it's you know it's an eight or nine hour day on you know on on the on the stream uh and now realistically if i could probably finish three runs in in a in a saturday stream if i just didn't reset them so um that movement in there where we grabbed a maiden's kiss that we don't need the but the important part of it is that it allows us to skip a dialogue with prompto that is well known as seaside supermodels dialogue Hmm, funny. Look, I didn't didn't get Seaside Supermodels again. 
This literally only happened once. <laughs> the funny part is it only happened to you once in a live marathon. Yeah, in front of 15, 20,000 viewers. Cool. Yeah. Cool <laughs> story, bro. <laughs> I'm going to grab this bracelet. It's very important. I need it for next chapter because our damage needs to be in a very, very, very tight window. You can never... All right, Mel, are you still awake over there? Yeah, don't put me on the spot like that. <laughs> what? That's of course I'm awake. Every time you say my name, it's how quickly can I get to the unmute button? <laughs> it's the mini game I've been playing tonight. Um, you looking for a couple donations? Uh, yeah, anything you have to plug. I have like, uh, I want to say like a minute, 15 seconds or so of just kind of free space right now. Okay, Actually, I forgot 15. to load, so about two minutes. Yeah, that gives us plenty of time to appreciate my favorite donation comment of the night. Um, Anonymous donates $40. Thank you so much. And they say, if Fyraga is fire and Blazaga is ice, what element is lasagna? Lasagna. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, that Anonymous. Beautiful. Love it. We also have a $5 donation from Creative Ellie. They say, always a pleasure supporting Kyo's marathon runs. Good luck. Ellie. We love Ellie. I love Ellie so much. I, love I still Ellie owe so him much tacos. Too. I owe him tacos. We can only have taco night when Ellie's around. So Brandon, me while playing Final Fantasy XIV last night, ran into Ellie in a uh, randomly queued up thing together. True story. Yeah. All right. If, if you're willing to not have tacos except for when one person's around, it it's a limit a really break tradition. Person. Whenever whenever we go out to limit break, I do like a family taco night, and I make tacos for like 40, 50 people <laughs> out of out of one small residential kitchen. Does this vessel have an entry permit? I, I cook a lot. <laughs> uh, entry permit? All right, so Mello, I need you in chat to you. to figure this one out for me. Here. Okay. That's as old if as you take guessing. two you lasagnas, right? Stack them one on top of each, one on top of another. How many lasagnas do you have now? One bus. lasagna. Could say that. Are you Three sure? Years ago. That's what the guy no. meant by old. Me either. Yes. Why I asked. I could have ended badly. <laughs> do you do you get rid of the of one of the lasagna's bowls? Do you like are you Yeah, 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 yeah. Or? You just like oh. you you, you kind of take the two and just <laughs> I, I hope yeah. your lasagna does not make that noise. <laughs> I have, I have very dramatic concerns if your lasagna makes that noise. Nice plop though, right? As it comes out of the assuming <laughs> glass bakeware. <laughs> <laughs> ah, dude, I love Pyrex. Can we talk about kitchen tech for a little bit? I know yeah, it's on I'm the bingo a card. Huge Pyrex fan, but recently I, I got into some stoneware. Stoneware is oh, really good. If you if you if it's got a great glaze on it, stoneware is awesome. Yeah, I don't even know what that means, I but I agree. Uh, say stoneware. Dude, one of my favorite cooking dishes. I have a, a it, it's stoneware, but it's enamel. It's an enamel baked Dutch oven. I use it for like when I steam mussels. Oh, dude, it's so great because the flavors just kind of like chill around in there and it's it's ceramic, so it doesn't absorb. So it's not like sucking in any of the any of the butter or the garlic or the white wine or the shallots or anything else you put in your steamed mussels. Just really concentrates the flavor. Hmm. You laugh about lasagna, old lady. Uh, you laugh about lasagna sandwiches. My buddy, that used to be one of his favorite drunk snacks ever. He would literally just, for some reason, always have lasagna in his house. And he'd just, piece of white bread, lasagna, piece of white bread. I, I'm concerned for that man forever. I have definitely had a spaghetti sandwich before. So oh, it's yeah, not, yeah. I mean, that's can't be that far you know look i'm from philadelphia so by by law i'm required to ask any restaurant excuse me what is your spaghetti policy as i carry in my spaghetti in a plastic bag also if you're having a bad day i have to offer you an egg in this trying time <laughs> gentlemen it has been a pleasure it's, it's, it's an it's an always sunny in philadelphia reference which is actually filmed in la 
Welcome to Accordo, lads. Sid Mitchell... Anyway, hey, we're in Altitia that looks suspiciously like Venice. And uh, I've definitely had people complain about getting lost in this area. It is a bit labyrinthine, which is understandable. Anyway, this is Wescom. We, uh, our dad knew him, so that's pretty cool. Um, but we're going to his bar because um, Sid also knows him. Um, do we get the joke out of the way now or do we wait until we're in negotiations? I put it on there because I knew I was going to make it or someone else in chat's going to say it and I kind of want to be the first one. You're in the pilot seat here. I am in the pilot seat. The pasta John? Yo, we stand John hard here. Our, our unofficial city motto in Philadelphia is bad things happen here. It's such a charming and positive message. <sighs> anyway, so because we stopped and talked to Gentiana, for some reason it counts as we rested at the hotel, which is weird, because for the longest time we, um, we would just take the gondola back, and for some reason, I forget who it was, it may have been the OOT, who's also a, a fellow uh, near Automata Runner at one point, um, went to the hotel first and then realized he could just fast travel back and it's like 20 seconds faster. I have to make some adjustments. That outfit looks good. I want to be really stylish. I have a meeting with like the, the, the prime minister of Altitia. So I got to get nice and snazzy for her with my, uh, semi fingerless golfing gloves and trucker hat. <laughs> Better than your um Power Ranger suit. Oh yeah, the Power Ranger. I didn't want to intimidate her, you know. Oh, right. So anyway, like most very 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 important diplomatic diplomatic uh negotiations here, you know, the opening is very important, you know, how you definitely want to get off to the right foot. Thank you. So the first thing I'm going to ask her just pay attention to this. Use it if you have to. First. Is are you sleeping with the bartender? Are you and Wescom lovers? If you want gossip, go Wait, no, that's not right. Anyway, this goes back to what I was mentioning earlier. Uh, shout outs to Rudy, uh, who ran this in the early stages of the game, who sat and timed out every single response that can be done in this negotiations uh, and figured out that basically just being a jerk like the rest of the game is generally faster. Now, let me ask some questions of my own. Why does the Oracle seek to awaken... Taylor Ham is New Jersey. I cook once a month. Doesn't matter why she's doing this. I have to answer that one. Yeah, basically gossip skip. Um, you do really get nothing besides just, like, feeling good if you're not a jerk here. Uh, basically, we're just like... She asks us, oh, well, what happened with the Archean? Like, I know you want to meet Luna. And we're just like... We, we literally could not be less concerned if we tried. At one point, she's going to ask us, like, so you're basically suggesting that my city just burned to the ground, and we're like... She's like, well, I'll just consider that a joke. It's pretty bad. <laughs> yes, Taylor Ham, pork roll. It's like the same thing. We don't talk about New Jersey. It's the, one, it's the only state in the United States you can get into for free, but pay to have to leave. Yeah, because everybody else just wants you to stay there. Noctis got mad steez. Uh, this, is, this is coming out on Supreme's collection 2022 fall winter. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's up with the facial expressions either. Just like for some reason, um, the facial expressions that Noctis makes during this negotiation are kind of just weird. It's like really weird. Fun fact, because I guess I still have the floor here. Um, Vivian Westwood worked on this game. A uh, very, very well-known fashion designer. Uh, you can actually buy the clothes that are in this game that the party wears, except for some of the weird DLC stuff. As well as, oops, well, minus right. or plus three seconds here for that one. Um, I was supposed to tell her we're doing her a favor. Um, but you can even buy Luna Freya's wedding dress. I believe most of the outfits from head to toe are roughly in the four to five thousand dollar range. Mainly because it's like Rowan, Zephart, and Vivian Westwood. 
doing most of the work. For both King and Oracle. There we go. All right. All right. So we're done with this. For your people. You're just like your father. Shoutouts to Roy Zoga. I've ran with that man. He also has a run coming up, I believe, Friday night. Uh, running Final Fantasy VII R. Uh, who do we, I completely forgot to double check before we started, Mello. Who do we have after this run tonight? Oh, uh, let's see. Next is going to be Neo. By, oh, yeah, that's right, Neo. Great yeah, game. Yeah, by Gallus Rinney. That's going to be good. That's that's surprisingly quick, isn't it? It's like barely over an hour, I think, or barely hour over... Hour 40 is what the hour estimate 40. is. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty insane. Yeah, also, shout-outs to me for having the schedule open as you asked that question. <laughs> I was so ready. <laughs> do, Indeed, you know how, like, shout-outs to you. You know how, like, we're sharing cameras and stuff like that? Yeah, dude, I can see. You left your uh, port 4447s open. Oh, yeah, my bad. might want to close that. Exactly. I can't promise. Uh, if I you can. have like oh, one God. donation, you could probably sneak one in here so if we want to keep it keep it rolling or you want to promo anything real quick. Sure. Sharky donates two hundred and eight dollars. Ah, Sharky. Thank you. Another large one. And they say multiply Sid's social security number by fifty-four and add that to Prompto's total. <laughs> Let's see what that takes us to actually. Cause uh Prompto, <laughs> I think that would definitely make Prompto take the lead here. Yes, it would. One second to refresh. Yeah, Prompto is now sitting at $521.90. What's wow. up? I know someone wants to do something about that. Yes, in this chat, we absolutely stand gritty. Mello, do you know what gritty is? No clue. Does anyone in chat know what gritty is? Do I count? Yes, yes, you do. Would you like to describe Gritty to the fine a people nightmare. of ESA? No, he's not. He's a f he is a perfect representation of the city of Philadelphia. How do you feel about an eight foot tall fuzzy? Uh, it's about eight foot tall fuzzy. Wears uh, knives on his shoes. Has a has a bit of a beer gut and uh, has wild googly eyes. That just Barney? stare into your soul. She will have a fighting chance. Yeah, but he, he has he wears knife shoes, but not Barney. He's orange, not purple. Oh, yes, say yes. There it is. Someone has a gritty emote in chat. It's so good. You have a gritty emote. <laughs> Do we love gritty? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Google gritty. Oh, let's see. <laughs> You might want to mute yourself for when the screams come out as he <laughs> vacates your soul from your body. Uh. I told you, he stares into your soul. It's uncomfortable. If worst comes to worst, you... We love Gritty. I'm glad everyone loves Gritty. This is like, uh, this is just like a furry Cheeto. It's terrifying. <laughs> it got into a fist fight with a small child. <laughs> Got five minutes for a uh, 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 fighting <laughs> fighting minor. Ah, oh, dude, I I'm so glad that other people know what gritty is and find it just as humorous and lovable as I do. Anyway, story wise, we haven't touched on the story in a while. Hey, we're finally about to get married. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, uh, she's not looking too hot. Oof. Uh, to be honest, one of my favorite cutscenes. It very very moving, powerful speech. And, um, well, here come the Imperial soldiers. One thing I also really appreciated about this game is just the, the, the just wide range of background characters that they have. They have all sorts of skin tones, age ranges, heights, physical features, hair. Like, they did a really good job with the NPCs. Like, they didn't have to because NPCs in a Final Fantasy game that you can't really interact with. But they've decided to go all out anyway, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Look, just because we threw snowballs at Santa Claus and D-cell batteries at John Cruck doesn't mean we're bad people. I'm on it. 
Uh, so, pretty important stuff here. A lot of little minor technical um, glitches here. I'm going to try and avoid actually directly coming into contact with pretty much anyone that I can. If I do that, I can get out of combat pretty free. Like right there. If you bump into anyone, like pretty much physically touch anyone, you can't exit combat that way. And you have to come out here and then run back and then go back in to exit combat. You're also it's noticing really weird. That yeah, you're also noticing that I've swapped over to Fyra. Um, we're going to skip the f initial phase or AKA phase zero of Leviathan with this magic. With a very well-timed and very well-placed magic, we will prevent her from doing her, like, I'm going to destroy the entire city thing. Uh, again, following tradition, it's quicker to just ignore pretty much every quick time event in this run. Just is what it is. I enjoy it because it keeps my hands fresh. I can have some tea. I can type a message. I can do whatever I need to do. Also, you get a really cool view of the city and the Imperial Dreadnoughts. Pretty dope. Also, I was told by the uh, one of the devs that the lighting effect for those flying sprites was one of the longest things they had to kind of try and figure out. Just because it's a, a body of water above a body of water with a light source coming down from the top. So there's multiple points of refraction and reflection. Leviathan is a lady. This is a great fight. It'll be over in about, if I can do it right, it I think it's like a, a minute three, maybe, start to finish. Yo, shout outs to Deja Vu. All right, looking good. And I'm going to set myself up here so I can skip phase zero. It's a beautiful fight overall. Oh, I love it. Except when it goes wrong. And this should be good. One, two. See ya. And casually, it's a lot of fun. In the speed run, it's a lot of fun, especially once you get Death Spiral locked in. <laughs> I, I will say half about half of the voice acting in this game is just various grunts, groans, and impacts. But it's still really good. The cast that did this was fabulous. Ray Chase uh, doing a tremendous job. I want to say Robbie Draymond was in on this, and I can't remember the other two off the top of my head, but fabulous work. Also, uh, Darren DePaul doing tremendous work as Arden uh, in the English act. Just very good. I need to go up three, I think. One, two, three. Yep, perfect. So I'm just going to sink into this fight, and y'all can just watch the Leviathan melt. If uh, anyone has anything to cover or talk about, feel free. I'm just going to kind of lock in on this fight to make sure it goes seamlessly. A couple of little things that I want to point out um, while he's doing this fight. You're going to notice that we are keeping our distance from Leviathan the most, as much as possible. It uh, saves down on animation time. Um, the other thing is, is we're going to make sure we don't go for any of the vulnerable points. Um, which, if you do this fight casually, you remember it, it causes a, a break to happen. Um, oh. And we don't want that break because it does cost time for the animation. She caught me on the water. Very, yep. very rare mistake there on that one. And that's almost close enough. I'll get her when she stands up. That's the entire Leviathan fight. Uh, we skipped phase three, which is the fastest phase to skip. I actually figured out you could do this by mistake at level one, go figure. Um, this, is another, this is another boss that scales with your HP, but because I had different equipment on, I realized I could, we can realistically skip certain phases in this fight. We can skip phase two or phase three and uh, phase two, three is the fastest to skip because it has like a setup animation. She's going to sit here for a little bit because the game is like, hey, we need to do phase three and then checks its HP and is like, oh, we're we're dead. We, we can't do phase three. Uh, okay, <laughs> load, the, load the next flag, which is the, the ending kind of quick time event.
But don't worry, we'll see this very, very special version of Armager again very soon. Uh, what's our time looking like? 257 ish? 250, 257? That's not bad. That's not too far from PB pace, I think. It's, it's a little bit off, but like for marathon pace, it's very solid. My goal yeah. is to try and get this sub 424 49. I was losing so much time to mistiming those cutscene skips. That's I figured that out. I saved six seconds in timing the cutscene skips properly, finally. <clears throat> anyway, as once with chapter one, the end of chapter one, things are not going so smoothly for the boy band. Boy, is this going to be a rough chapter coming up. So I'm going to do my best to just skip the entire thing. Uh, because that's what I plan on doing. Um, this is, I don't even remember who really stumbled onto it, but this, the, the way we skip this chapter has changed three times. And the chapter itself, since the release of the game, has literally changed three times. It all takes place in the same area. What you do to get through it has changed, though. Um, I actually miss old chapter 10 because it was fun. We'd, we'd come in with a high-powered Blazaga, and the way the highest tier magic, or well, the, the Aga tier magic works is it has not only large AoE, but it also has effects on the ground. Um, so we would cast Blazaga on this kind of like small pond and freeze all of our enemies in place and then just pick them off. I can still hear your keyboard, Alfina. Sorry. <laughs> Your keyboard is so loud. I love it. I honestly thought I'd hit key mute. It's all good. I just like busting your chops on it. I know your keyboard sound better than anyone's. <clears throat> anyway, in my opinion, the biggest improvement that has been patched into this game is you're not forced to sit on these long, long train rides if you want. It's really cool that they programmed all this cool scenery and all these lighting effects. As a speedrunner, I appreciate that, you know, I get five minutes cut off the game. <laughs> <laughs> you can still search the train. There's actually a lot of cool hidden items on this train. Not super hidden, but some pretty decent stuff you can pick up along the way. But none of them are going to save us as much time as just getting off the train. <clears throat> One step closer to finding the next tomb. <sighs> I'm actually not going to move coming out of this cutscene because for some reason, if you do, Noctis decides that he wants to go the complete opposite direction that you hold your thumbsticks in. It's rather strange. Uh, we're going to get a phone call from Kor, who's still alive and kicking, dude. He's like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, man. Can't keep him down. But he's going to tell us, hey, by the way, you stopped in Cartanica. There's a royal arm down there. Hold your nose. All right, bro. Random advice. Um, but what was really important that we skipped in a lot of these cutscenes is Ignis doesn't have his sight right now. Um, Ignis, uh, to, to help save us and, you know, protect Bellman's his friends, now. decided to put on our dad's ring, which he is not of the royal bloodline, so we're just, he's just lucky it didn't absolutely kill him and just, you know, turn him into dust. Anyway, we're going to use that uh, that camera. If anyone remembers the camera trick in Chapter 5, we're going to reuse that to break out of like a forced walking cycle. And then I'm going to teleport myself back to the beginning of the dungeon. Uh, we've used that technique a few times, and this is just to help set up a skip. And if I do the skip right, I can also do another little bit of tech that I have figured out recently that helps make things a little bit easier as well. Nope, move too far. Maybe? Mind Game's just giving me the business there. I overstepped my spot. Anyway, I'm not. You probably haven't seen this unless you've watched a speedrun of this before. But, and I really like this crane over here. Oh, first try, looking great. And no fall damage either, even though we fell about 400 feet. Uh, for some reason, changing outfits during that animation cycle. <laughs> Uh, just kind of resets your, your Z-axis. And, uh, yeah, don't take fall damage. 
That was awesome to get that first try. That was basically the last super big run killer for me. Like, thing I really wanted to show off. So I got all three of them first try, no mistakes. This I is still the haven't gotten fight. that skip. And we are going to use Armager and then Armager Chain on this bad boy. I'm going to actually hold it a little bit longer than I normally would just because I've changed my setup for this fight. And Rip. we're just going to end up a little short because it backed away, but that's totally fine. There we go. Uh, another thing I'm just going to grab while I was thinking about it. I wanted to do that during the other menu, but I always forget to combine it because it's literally just a change I came up with like a day or two ago to save a couple of seconds in Chapter 11. Because Chapter 10, I don't mind if there's an extra three to four seconds on the end. I'd rather not have to do it in Chapter 11 where things can already get pretty hectic. Uh, so basically, we're just going to keep fighting this Marlboro that just refuses to go down, and Ignis is going to say, Oh, no! We've got to come up with a strategy! Which, because the Marlboro hasn't moved, will always be right here. And hey, instant cutscene. This is going to be as fast as possible. It should be just a little bit over seven minutes because I didn't get the return to entrance quick enough. But so far, I've been I've been keeping keeping pretty tight pace. I've been impressed with this run, even though it hasn't been perfect drop wise along the way. Our money money route was really nice, and everything like fight wise has been fairly generous. The last kind of we have a couple of jerk fights left, but yeah, at this point, whatever. <laughs> anyway, that was all of chapter ten, and I'm gonna go get the katana of the wanderer. Ooh, Gladio said a bad word. Oops. I made a boo-boo, so we're going to lose like 10 seconds here. Oh, well. <clears throat> Finger slip. Oh, I see what you did. Yeah. It's like, I was watching for a second going, what did you do? Yeah, it's very, it's, I just hit up as a force of habit. Yeah, it, you get this weird double loading screen, so it's actually like a 30 second time loss if you make that mistake. Oh well. You guys mind if we stop in Tenebrae? <laughs> Might as well hop off. If it helps him move on. <laughs> All set for boarding? And that's it. Yeah. All chapter 10. Yeah, on the train, uh, basically, we're now pretty much trying to make our way to Gralia. Um, <clears throat> and, well, pretty much our only hope at this point is to grab the crystal, um, which is pretty much the only thing we know of that can help beat back the Empire and prevent the world from plunging into darkness. I should pay attention to uh, advancing that. I missed the little huh? audio cue. Oh, well. Hmm. All right, buddy, we got time. I'm going to wake you up from your nap. Me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> GDEX86 donates $50, and they say, shout-outs to Freya. Yeah. How far away are we from uh, getting the fair on stream? We are uh, $365 away. You heard it, guys. We've got a, uh, an hour and a bit. In the midst of the Empire's retreat, For the conspicuous craft remained behind. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it's all good. I, uh, um, let's see. I also just want to talk again about why we're here. Um, again, yeah. for those that haven't heard it yet, we're here supporting Alzheimer Fondin. Alzheimer Fondin is the Swedish national fundraising organization focusing on Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-related diseases. Alzheimer Fondin's aim and purpose is to increase fundraising to the benefit of scientific research in order to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Something caught my ear. Hey, Captain. Mission complete. 
Splendid. It's almost time for the popsicle graveyard. They've been growing longer day by day. Ugh. There was talk anyway, this at was this point in the game, you do get a, a bit of an an updated synopsis. The the parties kind of patched out their anger with each other, but they've also noticed that as the gods have been slain, the nights are going longer and longer to the point where it might literally just be nighttime the entire time, which is obviously not good because staying out after dark and the demons are liable to catch up with y'all. Thanks, Cindy. That's was that your Cindy? Yeah, that's my that's my it's midnight Cindy, and I've been talking for about. Six hours straight, basically. Okay, because I was like, I, I thought you had better twang, because that, <sighs> that didn't have it. If I could remove all the Bondo dust from my lungs, yeah. Also, I'm like wearing jeans, a shirt, a vest. I'm a bit warm and uncomfortable. <sighs> Where's the cosplay is hot? Yep. Oh, wow. I didn't even think about that one. Yeah, the co complaining about the cosplay. <laughs> There's one. Does that does that finish a bingo card yet? No. Doesn't Ooh. make any sense. Dang, I did really good with these. Make people on the edge of their seat. There's a couple really close. It's close really only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. I'm not loving that. You've mentioned time loss, but even complained about time loss, so we're fine. I would I would count it. I I, I would oh, allow you count it. it. If I count it, I assume that that creates one. Yes. Oh. I don't. Well, just just wait. We still have we still have Foros, Ravis, and Rogue to go. Right. It's like we've mentioned some, but it really isn't complaint. It's like we lost like two seconds. This is fine. Like it's like okay. Shortest cutscene skip in the game, right there. That cutscene skip saves like a second and a half. I don't know why it's a cutscene. It just is. Seriously, man. Cut it out. So um. You guys don't notice Arden's talking funny and moving very funny. Yeah. Are you seriously trying to kill me? He even calls us dude and knocked. Knocked. It's all your fault. You won't even let me. Do you really mean that, knocked? I do. You can't talk your way out of this. You won't even let me. Knocked. Please, can't we talk for a sec? Never. <laughs> ah, big yawn. Knocked. Please. But yeah, where is Medico? And I totally forgot to make. If anyone, I, I, look, it's because it's because it's a European marathon. I didn't want to make the Hillary Clinton, Angela Merkel love child joke. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Medi Medico's probably asleep. Gonna, but I put I put it on there as a long shot, but that's because like the bingos are pretty are pretty hard, you know, because I I know which areas I'm gonna hit and where chats tend to gravitate towards when I run this game. Are you okay? So I had to throw the oddballs in there, so it just wasn't too easy. He's here. If he is, that would explain all this. Now I know which card you're on, Sharky. I bet he. This is why I made different cards. Ignis and Gladio went up to inspect the engine room. I say the two of us go I don't really have a joke about it. It's yeah. just that if if you put it in if you play this game in German, she, it kind of looks like and feels like you're talking to Angela Merkel in in Alticia. Also, if you put this game in German, it is considerably, considerably slower. slower. Considerably means like about two to three minutes slower. It's not much faster in Japanese. I think it's almost negligible. French is slightly slower. But German is considerably. Hey, there we go. Extra Magitek booster. So I got one for one for Serbi, one for Aramon. Uh, probably do Serbi first round so I can try and carry it into second. I, uh, I have some time to read a couple donations, right? Go for Go it. Go for it. All right. We have a $20 donation from Gritty. They yes! say, me want ferret. <laughs> yeah, so that puts us, um, currently we're $325 away from seeing the ferret. We have about an hour, what, an hour and 20 minutes-ish, you'd say? Yeah. 
favorite percent. The best percent. We also have a $20 donation from Augendrosser. Hey. He <laughs> says, hey, Kios, good luck with the run. You're doing amazing. Amazing job by Mello on hosting. An awesome job by the ESA staff and volunteers for making this event possible. Thank you so much, Richard. I love that human. Me too. Also incredibly handsome. <laughs> I could not agree more. Very huggable. Oh, so gentle. Yet strong. Kind of like an old oak tree. Kind of like a gritty. Mm, strong and huggable. I don't know. I haven't seen Rich summon any demons recently. <laughs> I have also not seen him at a hockey match get undressed and get painted like one of the French girls. Yeah, that's a thing that happened two weeks ago at a Flyers game. Hey, you you want to say you hate it, but you love the fact that it happened. It is literally the most Philadelphia thing. I think Alec mentioned it earlier, but literally Gritty came out. The rest of the country was like, Oh my God, what is that thing? It's hideous. And Philadelphia <laughs> media is like, don't you dare. That's ours. It's a national treasure. <laughs> Got any others? Cause I'm just, I'm, I filled my armor bar. And at this point I'm just farming for extra muscle stims and uh, Magitek boosters. Yeah. Um, Keep thank you, Eddie Pooh for the $35 donation. They say awesome to see ESA happening right now. I missed out on my chance to donate during the MGS2 race between Jag and D Limes, but I'm excited to watch the VOD for it. Thank you and good luck to all the runners in this event. Thank you. Yeah, that, yeah, was, a, that you. was a dope race. That was a really good race. I was lucky enough to be the donation reader for that race as well. That was uh, that was extremely close for most of the run. Yeah, I, uh, shout outs to fellow near Automata runner, uh, Jeff the Big Lizard, who had uh, his run with uh, Nick last night for Dark Souls 2. Unfortunately, he got some pretty bad luck early, but both of those two just absolute masterclass on that game. That was a heck of a race. <clears throat> uh, I also do want to say that right now, every time you donate, um, you have a chance to win one of our two wonderful prizes by our sponsor, ViewSonic. If your donations reach a cumulative total of $25, you enter to win um, one of the two monitors available. If you reach $35, you enter for both. If you go to prizes.esamarathon.com, you can check out the description for both of those monitors. I'm still available to win as prizes. Uh, they sound really good. Um, and Kios actually- was Yeah, I love mine. For it. I, I, I love mine. I got the uh, I got it earlier in 2019, one of the 144 Hertz with the one millisecond response time. Uh, I, I speed ran near for about a year and a half straight, and I got to tell you, in a game that literally milliseconds matter, and I'm talking sometimes frames matter, it's it's almost impossible to run without something of that quality. Uh, they are worth every penny, and the fact that they're offering up two is really good. So definitely for 25 or even $35, that is an absolute bargain if you end up getting lucky on it. Definitely. But if again, not, you're donating to alzheimer's research and i appreciate that too as someone that's lost someone to it so we appreciate y'all hanging out um and they are cumulative <clears throat> donations so um like i said earlier if you donated let's just say five dollars early in the, in the week um and you donate another 20 tonight that brings you to 25 which bang qualifies you for one tier of the monitors you do another 10 tomorrow and all of a sudden you are now qualified to win both of those wonderful monitors again prizes.esamarathon.com I, I think at this point we can count smash the mic. I definitely just smashed my hand off of it. There you go. I don't know if that helps anyone with bingo, but I knew it was going to happen eventually. Oh, <sighs> but now prompto has gone. My favorite, favorite cinnamon roll. Feels I, bad, I love the way you talk about prompto. If you get the chance to play his like DLC, you'll understand why it's like it's gut-wrenching oh that and uh if you actually stay at the hotel um in the 
like the first place we stopped after we got the car in chapter one. There's like a special cutscene that plays and uh, Noctis and Prompto sit out on the roof. And you can be rude and completely miss a very touching like kind of dialogue, but you get like the ability to to kind of learn a bit more about Prompto. Because you've already like the cutscenes kind of introduce who, you know, Ignis and, and Gladio are a bit, but Prompto is still kind of just like, well, you know, a little bit unknown yet at the time. Uh, are the two of you okay at least? Yes. Okay, on my way. Uh, I'll be there as soon as I take care of these stowaways. And things just go. So welcome to uh, running on top of a train. Yep. <laughs> we. I'll make, um... I'll, I'll make the joke because we're hurting. Uh, if you have poop percent on your bingo card this is where it comes from uh, I won't go into too much detail but there is a strategy that I will employ here where basically I'm going to prevent any enemies from being able to get me um, I actually due to strategy we used to not have the exosuit equipped here because we just needed more of it uh, because at the time we still were doing a few extra fights that we just now skip oh that was rude all right, I'll just take this guy down. But if we position ourselves uh, back far enough here, we actually can prevent the enemies from physically getting to us because, as you can see, the train car is kind of curving. Well, the enemies are just going to go in a straight line. However, a straight line sometimes, that, that one figured it out right there. Uh, sometimes a straight line means they get stuck in the back corner and don't hit the center, but that's all right. The Prompto and Arane attention is adorable, especially if you hang around in the post, like the, the chapter 14 slash post game content. Prompto talks a lot, a lot, a lot about Aranea and like spending time with her and hanging out with her. And yeah, you know. Anything else? I got like another minute to kill here. Um, let's see. I will say that if you donate now, you have a really good chance of getting your donation read, and <laughs> I would more than happily do my best uh, impressions of, of whatever you'd like me to read. Ah, I didn't have coerce the commentator into doing stuff. <laughs> uh, Should have put that on that next time around. Yeah, not not everybody is down, but I uh, I love trying, even if I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's just one of those things like I my commentary style is definitely what I'd consider unorthodox for sure. Um, like I'll focus on the story and the tech when I can, but I'm much more, much more into getting chat involved and getting involved with with the whole kind of process and getting people excited for stuff that, you know, to be fair, this isn't like everyone's favorite game as as we've come to learn, but at least making it, an, you know, an exciting or educational experience. And I've We've yet to have to resist. Yeah, it's it's like a it's like a speed run podcast, basically. I'm afraid not. Wow. Anyway, uh, we get to see best girl again. She's got cool hair, too. Uh, wasn't there one more mm -hmm. guys? Yeah. She also, notices that uh, somebody's uh, missing. Yeah, time. she does. Is he dead? I, I don't know. I also the have always loved the, the the textile and the embroidery on that. Like, just I, I don't I don't know what to call it. It's like a little. It's a very large embellishment on her, like kind of quasi half skirt so thing. You, think. I don't know what the technical Thanks name for that Palms piece of armor or the hip wear would be. Fight for. Fought for. My men and I are in the search and rescue. Anyway, she's going to do a little bit of dialogue and she's going to tell us that, hey, she quit the army, which is weird because she still has her ship from the army and there's a, another ship and another ship and a mech and there's soldiers. So sadly, I believe with if we would have gotten the DLC for Aranea, I had a feeling she probably just kind of like straight up dipped out of the army and just like took a bunch of took a bunch of stuff and deserters. Um, you find out a lot of very, very interesting things about the Imperial Army 
and how it is formed and, and who is in it and why and uh, during Endure. during Crompto's DLC, uh, which is why it, <clears throat> in in my opinion, it really flushes out the story more than pretty much any other of the well, DLCs that you can grab a hold of. Yeah, I guess Tacit. Really appreciate you going out of your way. Yeah, no sweat. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, Alex. She she just kind of was like. All right, I'm seeing you. Oh, well, uh, you know, this is mine. Well, I painted this ship, so I, I mean, you guys don't want this one. These soldiers look kind of weird. Yeah, I'm just going to take this two, one of these, three of these. <laughs> she did uh, what I call inventory misdirection, a classic maneuver. Uh, anyway, for those that actually care about the story, uh, this is Tenebrae. This is where Luna Freya grew up. Uh, and we're basically meeting with the former house retainer. We're gonna have a couple of flashbacks with Gentiana and um, <clears throat> Gentiana and Luna Freya. It is a very sad chapter. We've lost one of our friends. Uh, we've basically made it to you know where our 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 wife lived, and well, that's burnt to the ground too. Pretty much, Arden is Arden and his army are going on a crusade to just pretty much burn everything we love, and it's quite depressing. True. Anyway, we have this other quick cutscene here. Three of them. I honestly don't remember what that small child asks of us, but I'm sure we were very kind and nice to her. And we're going to meet up with uh, Biggs and Wedge again, or Wigs and Bedge, if you Ready can't remember. Just swapped out the damage cars for some new ones. Dining cars open. You need a break. Off, then. Dining cars open if you need a break. He's got such a gravelly voice. I, I truly appreciate it. Anyway, we're going to go to Gralia. But basically, uh, this is just kind of like... Honestly, this is one of the last spots you can kind of stock up. The game, The game is kind of subtle at hinting that. But th this, those are pretty much like your last item shops for, for a good bit. So hopefully you made it through. Ugh. Cup noodles sounds good. I had steak fajitas for dinner, though, with a hit it with some hickory smoke powder. Some smoked paprika, some adobo seasoning. Good stuff. I guess we can count that as talking about seasonings. Look at all that snow. No wonder it's so cold in here. I'm counting it. Yeah, I don't think that completes a bingo. It gets, it opens up another path, though, if I recall. It finally puts that card kind of in play. All right, all right, it's good, it's good. We still got like an hour and a half to, to cruise through this, I think. A little bit less. That that's That's something that I've heard a lot of people really get upset about, but for me, I think it's really probably one of the most tasteful examples of product placement in a video game. Like, besides the Gladio Cup Noodle Quest, which is just so ridiculous anyway, it's just kind of fun. Like, the the Coleman sponsorship and the, the Nissan sponsorships are, like, very non-abrasive. Just like you're sitting around a campfire. Coleman. Okay, that's cool. It's good. Like, it's a stove, dude. I've been camping. Coleman makes great camping products. It would totally make sense that it would be there. I, there's I've also seen billboards for cup noodle like it it's could. it's it's just not like super duper in your face or absurd it's freezing I mean, better keep moving to stay warm the glacier did this I will talk about food all day and all night it's it's, it's literally it's literally become a problem in my life at some points uh, this needs to be, I'm forgetting this menu, this, this, everything looks great. Everything is awesome. Lying dead. And we'll do this. Oh, perfect. 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 I don't have any spare Magitek boosters. That dude always is such a risk. I'm just going to reset his spaghetti on this and just work my way back up from the top. So this fight can either be really quick or really slow. It depends on Snaga movement. 
And it also depends on how much of a good boy. Um, ooh, all right, I'll just do this. It really also depends on what we get out of Deathclaw. Deathclaw can be our best friend or he can be our worst nightmare. And these Snagas are just not cooperating. Now I will complain about time loss. That was just, just awful. I haven't had one this bad in a hot minute. But we'll live through it. Just hopefully we don't get also downturned by Deathclaw. Two muscle stims. I'll have two coming through with the woo. Yep. Shout out to the Wu Tang Clan. This is one of those uh, examples of the enemies kind of move in strange ways sometimes. Yeah, Ragnarok. Ragnarok's such a cheese weapon until it misses five of your warp strikes in a row and you have okay. to stop for an elixir. Uh, this damage is really low. I'm okay with it. I'm going to get blocked out of armor gear chain. Wow. Okay, well, worst case scenario there. Just unlucky. So I'm just going to pound through this. That's going to cost us about 15, 20 seconds. Just enough, though. Yeah, sadly, unfortunately, the game gave me one last shot at armor gear chain, but it was like incredibly late in split second. Is what it is. I've lost runs to it. It it happens. You hold it. Oh, that son of a bitch. I have Szechuan chili oil, peppercorn oil, actually. I I, I spend way too much time talking about food. My favorite place to go in life is the grocery store. I'm going to make an excellent housewife one day. My wife is so proud of me. Stop. Right, Baba? Stop, damn it. You went ahead, punch. You can't hear me. Where's Pronto? Oh, there you are. I'm worried about your, about your friends. friends. Arden making a sweet life alert re reference here. They've fallen and they can't get up. Slightly after, so the original dialogue for this actually had him doing an ad for the clapper, if anyone remembers what that is. <laughs> you know, there's a really easy one on the bingo card that, that no one has just thought to activate yet. I'm not helping everyone else. Yeah, I know, right? Me either. Anyway, hey, potential best girl, uh, Shiva, is actually Gentiana, the messenger, the entire time. Uh, we also get one of the most important weapons in the game, the trident of the oracle. <laughs> I just want to mention we're only $150 away from 25k. Oh, we close? You got some donos to read? Or am oh, I... I certainly do, yeah. Uh, Go for it. I just have a driving section, so I'm going to keep my head down anyway. Okay, yeah. Um, Wody donates $15, and they say, Good luck, Yos. Finish strong. Also, can I get Mello's best impression of, Put that cookie down! Now! <laughs> <laughs> In the voice of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hey, you got it, Wody. Uh, <laughs> I don't, Arnold's never been one that I've tried but i mean i guess i was very good it, it shocked me almost um <laughs> thank you wody we also have uh, and thank you kids we also have an anonymous donation with no comment for 50 dollars. hey thank you so much anonymous we appreciate all of your donations tonight and yesterday and the day before Only a matter of time before and we, we have a five dollar donation idea. from dogfather19 with regalia. no comment right. thank hey. you so much Knocked. It looks like we'll be joined by Marquis Salim Andor the Fourth on backseat commentary here. He's going to be my my co-pilot and navigator. Andor, oh, you making some muffins? He's making muffins. Does anyone have any requests, Bubba? You want muffins? I wish Mew did that. I wish he would do it on places that would help, like my aching calves and feet and back. Uh, that complaining about being old. There's one. I haven't, didn't even think about that one. <sighs> anyway, time to be a race car driver. Jerry was a race car driver, 22 years old. Never did win no checkered flag, but he never did come in last. 
Captain Pierce was a strong man. Strong as any man alive. Uh, any Primus fans in the chat, I guess? Primus sucks. <laughs> For those not in the know, Primus, Primus fans, when you... You're like, oh, you're a Primus fan? Yeah, Primus sucks. Also, shout outs to Primus, the uh, Parasite Eve speedrunner and uh, habitual meme artist of Canada. Fabulous fella. So, this driving section is extremely annoying. And RNG. Yep. yep. If you hit any of these barrels that are randomly on the road and extremely hard to just Oof. right, you can indeed flip the car. Hmm. I got shunted. Pulled my best Danny Fiat there and just decided to smash into the nearest wall as quickly as possible. Are we seriously marching into the capital empty-handed? And with no assurances, the crystal can beat back the demon hordes. Guess we'll find out the hard way. <laughs> no turning back now. We're Thank you, Jeff. Fellow lizard person. All right, so there's the camera being all sorts of weird. If anyone noticed, I actually rolled in the middle of the cutscene, and I was hoping it wouldn't create a problem, but it 1,000% did. Yeah, we say goodbye to Dad's car. Feels bad, man. Sorry, Dad. Look, I'm just glad that Roman Grosjean is okay. But if I had to suffer through Kevin Magnuson destroying another Ferrari, I was just, just going to literally apply to drive for Haas Ferrari myself at this point. What can I bring to the team? Well, I won't crash the car into a million pieces every other weekend. How about that? Going up. All right. So this is chapter 13. The original chapter 13 is one of my favorites because it really separated the, the good runners from the runners that really knew how to put down. Um, but now we do the easy route because it's faster. And because the game is still in normal difficulty, this doesn't count as being any different. Um, <clears throat> it's the, the difficulty level and HP levels don't change for any of the enemies uh, as they would. Um, but it just is actually easier than going through Noctis's area. He may have feigned friendship, but he's proven a foe before. It's also nice to not be jumping for a while. Yeah, instead I have to fervently mash L3 like my life depends on it, which is why my movement is extremely jerky. I'd much rather do spear dash movement through this area as opposed to, <laughs> to uh, L3 mashing. The reason... Why we don't hold circle to run is, well, circle is your attack button. And anytime you get near an encounter, Gladio would just randomly swing at anything that's close. Um, so I had just have to mash L3. Uh, basically, this is uh, Arden pretty much guiding us back to Noctis, playing his weird, weird games that he does, being the master manipulator. Um, I've personally always viewed Arden as Kefka, but with an actual reason to be a bit unhinged. Um, a lot of people say, um, Where are we now? Wherever it is, it's Kafka is, is absolutely out of his mind, which we all know he is. But having played through six, I never really kind of understood why he was the way he was. Uh, Arden's backstory. Arden has a reason to be very, very mad and jilted and feel slighted. Does it excuse his behavior? No, absolutely not. But I could see why it would happen. Looks like Arden bought himself some time. Then we've none to waste. Yeah, it's not like a, oh, surprise, you never could have guessed who the villain was after they've dangled it in front of you pretty obviously for most of the game. But huh? as you go through the game and see how he kind of devolves and starts to pick apart Noctis and his confidence and his friends and his family, it it's it's like hey this is this is real villain stuff as opposed like to just sort of i'm going to destroy the world and we're like no we're gonna save the world kind of you know you get stuck in that cycle of of rpg sometimes you know it's very often oh villain bad because villain bad protagonist save world the end everybody happy hooray um i like that this ending was was a bit different it, it had a different feel
Yeah. Kefka was the prototype. We ought to be close to the core of the keep by now. And that's probably where the keep It's funny, we have Magitech here too, and we're doing lots of experiments with demons. Alright. I'll talk about the tech tips. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into this encounter. And I need these to Ah, oh, that would have been dope coming out. Alright. One up. Oh. Alright. No? Okay. Come on. They're giving me the business here. I didn't get them set up. There we go. Can I get one more? Holla holla. I did not get one more. Wow. All right, so this is... There we go. It's a very silly time loss there. Uh, they just decided to not do their normal attack. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I need to build my rage gauge, what is it? which it rhymes and sounds really dope. It's definitely a Gladio thing. Um, because it's going to increase the amount of damage that we do to Foros, and I'm going to try and get him down in three cycles here. We're off to a pretty good start here. I'm just going to keep tunneling through. There's great crits. Ah, this might work out. This might be good. This has potential to almost be a one cycle, realistically. On the crit, very nice. Uh, I just need a little bit more damage. It's fine. As long as he doesn't insta insta warp uh, like that or do something silly. There we go. So that was actually a very, very quick for us. Makes up for the amount of time we lost doodling around getting our rage gauge up. <clears throat> Hang in there, Noct. But I'll take it. It's Normally, just time norm shuffling. What? More time shuffling. Yeah, I, I lost time to the the long setup there, but I saved time to actually getting a clean four us for once. That dude is the bane of my existence. I'm going to roll under here. And that's it for the Gladio section. So now we're going to swap back to basically where Noct's um, journey through the tower ends. For those curious that don't feel like playing it because it is long and you need to stock up with items, Noct is basically abandoned in the tower and only has the ring. He basically has to use the the one thing he's been avoiding for so long because of how weird and wonky the power of it is. Um, and we'll, we will not see that in this run, which is why this is no ring. Uh, the ring adds a certain amount of RNG to the game that makes it very wildly unpredictable. Um, I also find it very boring, and generally most speedrun chats as well find it pretty job. boring because you just basically load up on ethers and, well, hope you get lucky. And that's not really a fun speedrun. I'd rather do a lot of cool technical stuff. Uh, for those of you that have managed to make it through this entire almost three and a half hour run, you will be rewarded with very cool and very technical boss fights at the end of this run. Um, <clears throat> including going into Ifrit with only 32 HP and not wearing the invulnerability armor and basically one cycling Ifrit. The, the fight will literally be over before you can blink. The ring is fun because it's very easy. I'm a huge fan of Disgaea 5. I actually did commentary for Green Z Saber's run for uh, RPG Limit Break back in 2019. Absolutely fun game. Recommend it. Cool speed run. And uh, we also got to hang out with PPJ, if anyone is familiar with the SMT community. Yeah, we got lots of cool boss fights coming up. Yeah, shout, shout outs to Green Z Saber. I uh, met, met him at an event, actually, and then found out that we were practically neighbors. <laughs> yeah, he's so super low key. Yeah. Like, super low key. Such a good dude. He actually. Um, so we, I got engaged to my fiance, supposed to be wife, basically just referred to as wife um, at Limit Break 2018, 2019, 2018. She's going to I'm so glad she can't hear me right now. She's going to fucking she's going to kill me because I forgot. Um, but I um, I had this plan that we were going to go hike up. Uh, you know, like a like a nice little hike, which I then found out once we got there was actually like bring your backpack and hike because it's it was like eight or nine percent great. It was an actual serious hike. Um, 
Also, we're not we're no longer jumping because jumping is nerfed. As you saw, my movement was a little bit weird. Um, but like, I, I invite. I wanted to invite a few of the friends and Why of the stream and just kind of do do like a small thing, which then turned up to be like thirty people climbing a mountain in Salt Lake City, Utah. Greensies. <laughs> Greasy sabers in like literally penny loafers, no socks and shorts, just climbing a mountain. He was like, "I just want to get some exercise." I was like, "All right." Like he had no idea. Like he he asked because he heard we were going hiking. I figured like he knew. I was like, "Yeah, dude, I don't mind." Like everyone's going now, so it'll be like a cool group activity. He was like, "Oh, congratulations on getting engaged afterwards." I had no idea. I was like, "No one told you." Why you came? Uh, <laughs> like I believed you were. I it was wasn't such even a great there and hike. I knew that that's what that hike was. It was such a it was such a cool hike. You basically had a view of Salt Lake City right down Main Street and then the lake to the left, uh, right. Uh, Mello, what do we have up next after this? I, I think I'm within like, what, 30 minutes of this run ending at this point? Um, up next is Neo. Yeah. Neo's, Neo's a fabulous run. Uh, the second second game just came out, I want to say, or the complete edition just came out, like, what, a, a week or two ago, I think? Um, I, I know it was recent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, February 5th, it looks like. Or, I might be getting that wrong. No, the that sounds about right. February 5th, yep. I, I remember right. seeing it slide by, like, key mailer. On the train, just before your weapons failed you, it's nearby. Um, so you let me know if I have time for a few more donations. Um, I will no rush, just no kind of go through what our setup is and what our next objective is, and then we can let it go. Um, oh, yeah, we're so basically, what we are now in is the keep. Uh, that last little thing that I destroyed there is, um, uh, what was basically preventing our power. My goal now is to basically get to the crystal. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of magic casting, basically using up some of the stuff that I've been just kind of having lay around left over from the, the earlier parts of the run because it's still doing really good damage. This Snaga is just stop. Uh, you will also see finally the stop Trident the of the worst. Oracle. Uh, the Trident of the Oracle does amazing DPS due to the fact that it basically generates holograms of yourself that continue to do damage. Uh, but if you want to take it away, I don't have anything for about another two minutes until I fight Foros, and I can explain Foros and Ravis while I'm working on Ravis. Two minutes, got it. Okay, so first of all, I want to say we are $150 exactly away from hitting the $25,000 milestone for the stream. Um, such a large amount of money raised for Alzheimer Fondant. And also, Kios has volunteered to bring his ferret on stream if we hit 25 grand. Maybe so, the ball pit. Ferret percent? I mean, I think we all want to see that. Um, we have a $35 donation from Michael. Thank you so much. And their comment is, Alzheimer's sucks. True. Simple, clean, true. Where's that elevator? We also have, uh, thank you, Schlor Bachoff for a $35 donation. They say, love Final Fantasy XV, despite its flaws, it's always fascinating seeing someone complete a game in mere hours. It took me tens of hours. Yes, Arnea, best girl. And we need that ferret. Yeah. Love the ferret. Love that. Also, both of those comments were $35. And if you've been paying attention, $35 qualifies you for not just one, but two chances to win two different monitors sponsored by uh, ViewSonic, one of our wonderful sponsors for this event. Again, go to prizes.esamarathon.com to check out what two monitors you could have a chance to win if you donate minimum donations of $25 or $35. Right. So right now, this is our last gasp of magic. This will be the last stuff that I make for the run. It'll be the last stuff I gather. We used to do very specific amounts, but to be honest, at this point, I've just gotten comfortable enough. I just kind of throw whatever I have at it. The numbers look really good, though, which is really nice. So I'm going to make those real quick. Uh, the last one is going to be a Blazara of somewhat determinate strength. I'm going to make seven of those with the Imperial Medal of Honor that is going to be stored. Uh, and I'm going to do lightning and pretty much as much of that as I can get into it. 120 Thundara. Sounds terrific. That one's going to come with me. 
right now. You also notice, oops, that I forgot to swap over to this. Um, basically, our goal was to get our Armager bar hey, almost as close to Could full as possible. Um, you know, I should have left it on, but you know what? We'll just we'll we'll freeform Ravis here. And this is for us. Uh, for us is the old, uh, I want to say Emperor Ideolus, but he has thus mutated into something hideous and horrible. That should be enough damage to take him out as long as we don't squib cast. Great, terrific fight. Nice and easy. I'm going to bring this back for the Blazara, and we are going to now take on Ravis, uh, who is revealed to us finally in this chapter if you take Noctis's route. Pretty much was actually a homie. He gave us so much trash and fought with us, but as it turns out, was just trying to basically be a mole and to to deal with Arden and hopefully to prevent things from getting as bad as they have. This fight can be pretty random depending on how much uh, Ravis moves around. I'm basically looking for him to just stay in one spot. Uh, but it is a pretty dope fight and the soundtrack is pretty, pretty dope as well. Two. Uh, this looks like a great start. Are you? No, you're moving. You're moving. Got it. Uh, you're gonna do me like this today. Okay. You're gonna embarrass me in front of my friends. I'm just gonna go power ex start here. Stay. Good boy. And I'm looking for his HP to hit a specific value here on the bar. We're pretty close. I don't think I have muscle stims. There we go. So now I'm going to bring in the Armager. Uh, you're going to see he's going to stumble and fall. I'm a little bit... I think I might be a little bit early on this. But I want to basically knock him over, and then he'll go into a vulnerable state. Perfectly timed. So I can get maximum damage out of the Armager chain there. And I can back that right into another cast. I have a spare muscle stem. I will use it here because it's really one of the only places I can in an attempt to try and do as much damage here. I'm gonna pop an elixir because it's the first healing item I saw. You'll notice that even though we're wearing a suit that makes us invulnerable, I'm using the Royal Arms and it's still taking damage from me. So I think the suit is rather, rather balanced. I'm just gonna try and push through. I only have two casts. I can use force a third one if I want to here, but I think I might get him down before I need it. That was a very, very fast Ravis. That was actually like clinically fast. I generally don't finish before that third cast comes through. So that was really, really, really quick. <coughs> Air step sword back on. Our next goal is again, to get Armager full up. I need it for a fight at the end. We are also coming up to our last actual break in the run. So if you want the ferret before like we hit the end of the game, now is your chance. You have like literally probably, we have four minutes for the next cutscene. I have a minute and a half of movement and then we have the last two minute break. So you're probably talking about 10 minutes to get your donos in get a chance to grab some prizes, make Mello do some... Only $100 to go. Yeah, make Mello do some silly voices. And because yes. this is not level one, I don't have to switch an experience bangle. If you want to take this away, Mello, feel free. Uh, basically, I just have to get out of here, and then there's a like a three or four minute cutscene, and then we're back in control. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Um, $50 from SYN Ardwin. They say, this run has been absolutely hilarious. Much love to Kios, Alfina, Mellow and the entire ESA crew. Donation goes to Runner's Choice. Mm, who's still in the uh, Prompto? Is still in the lead, right? Uh, Prompto is still in the lead. Uh, what's the next donation incentive? That's not this run. The next one uh, that's already met with all main missions for Neo. Um, whichever one is, whichever one's next, that is unfilled. You got it. Closed. Um, okay, also, yeah, I do want to mention, thank you, Alfina, uh, for, for commenting on this, but $100 to go until we hit the $25,000 milestone. And, and we'll even get to see the ferret. Maybe, maybe. How about this? $50 from the Kojido. They say, I want to see the ferret. 
Also, the FF15 run has been really enjo enjoyable, so that's neat. Thank you, the Kajito. I'll come back Thank you. you all. I swear. The question is, do I get the ball pit ready? I always want to see the fairy. That's that's where I'm at right now. She's so sleepy. I don't know where she is right now. She's either in her berry house, her race car bed, her pink tube, or her hammock. Our our pets are so spoiled. They're all on like super healthy diets, and like they get. Our ferret has a five story cage. Andor sleeps on the bed whenever he wants. Andor. Hey. Hey. Nobody listens to me in this house. Does anyone listen to you? No, no one listens of that to me. House. No one listens to me. Anyway, we're now about to get sucked into the crystal. It's not a good time. Zero out of ten would not recommend. Allow me to regale you with But we have a little bit of a cutscene here. I'm gonna get up and stretch. What? But, but what are you all talking about? Bears? The likes of which they hide everything. Um, during this cutscene, if there are other uh, questions that people have in chat, I'm happy to help answer them. Um, yeah, I can answer some. And Mello, well. if we have any other donations, this is a fantastic time as well. Yeah, um, okay, well, first of all, we just hit $25,000! Yes! Yes! We had the two $50 snipes in right at the last second, and I'll go ahead and read both of them. We have $50 from uh, Trollestein. They say, go Iris. <laughs> that must make it a lot closer. Um, we also have $50 from Sykes83 with no comment. Thank you so much. Let's see where that brings us in terms of last photo. She's a she's a regular on our stream. She has her own dedicated camera. She could fall back asleep in your arms. Nah, she's not that. <laughs> oh, I'll let her hang with me while we go through the dialogue, at least. See if she'll behave up here. You awake enough? Anyway, we now get to meet Bahamut, who at the end of this run has basically said, hey, if you have any questions, I will answer them for you, to which, of course, we'll respond. Nah, dude, I, I, nah, nothing. Got nothing for you. And the light was restored to this world. Nothing. <laughs> Everything in my house except me sleeps 20 hours a day. I sleep before everyone else gets all my extra sleep. Hey, hi. What, you the streamer now? Yeah. Streamer ferret. Anyway, we are now headed into the last chapter of Final Fantasy 15. Are you excited? Excited you want to say hi to everybody? No, you're just going to fall down the chair. So since Stinky, we went Stinky. into the crystal till now, it has been 10 years. 
from the beginning of the game to now, it's been 11 and a month. 11 and a month. I'll bring her back out. All right. What did I have, Magic Booster Wise? Two. Yes. Two. As the, as my chat refer, uh, affectionately refers to her as the poop sock. Where'd everybody go? All right. So I'm just going to start moving. I'm actually going to be able to move through this cutscene potentially as well. Nope. Didn't get it today. Yep, now we are pretty much entering. We have like a, a, a quick little drive. It's like another minute or two for kind of last second donations. And then it's pretty much nonstop boss rush. And it gets uh, it gets pretty tricky. I'll be doing a lot of menus, a lot of menu wing. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, now is definitely your time to get them in. Uh, if not, definitely thank you again for having me. Uh, I hope those of you who are staying awake staying alive working the night shift are excited to see neo after this fabulous game pretty techie speed run if i remember i think i've only seen it a, a handful of times but definitely some cool stuff going on there is a whole bunch of awesome speed runs the rest of this week here on esa marathon uh once again supporting alzheimer funding and i'm just gonna basically head for the head for the high road here uh the trigger for this cutscene is basically just touching foot on the road. Uh, if anyone remembers where we are, that was actually Golden Key. What is it, boy? Um, and I'm just going to basically head towards this truck uh, where we will Kids see... do not run into traffic. You aren't my dad. My dad went to bed. I make the decisions now. Uh, but hey, we're going to see a familiar face here. Uh, besides the dog, Umbra, who came to find us, but it's Talcott. Hi, Talcott. Wow. He's I all grown up. Yep. Yeah. And we get a nice tour, uh, exactly. basically in reverse of the first real drive we did during this game. <laughs> the guys must be pinching themselves right now. Where are they anyway? But yeah, you got anything for us, Mal? Um, in the way of donations, not right now. Um, yeah, I will say though, thanks again, everybody, to you know, make that last push to get to twenty-five thousand. Uh, that was definitely a lot of money raised during this. Uh, one run alone so far, and we still have some more time, so to get those in now, and I'll definitely be reading things um, just after the run when I can. Tube cat, pole, pole cat, stinky slinky, furry noodle. I, I, I like naming snakes, too. Uh, nope ropes, danger noodles. Demons moved in, forcing the people to move out. People still swing by the garage at Hammerhead from time to time. But it usually isn't for repairs. Mm. These days, it's less of a. Talcott is uh, right now, story-wise, catching us up on what happened while we were um, one of the few asleep for ten years. Detained. <laughs> Detained. Frozen in carbonite like Han Solo. He's kicking all right, just not as hard as before. You know, he hasn't these things. Lately. Yeah, the, the gist of it is, well, the boys, the Choka Bros, as we call them, just kind of. Went their separate ways. They still meet up occasionally. Ignis doesn't have his sight back. Sid's still kicking. Pours around. Cindy's still there. Iris is now a demon slayer, following in her uh, older brother's footsteps. But uh, pretty much the only place that's left is Lestalem and Hammerhead. And Hammerhead's like the only outpost. But it's basically because Sid refuses to move the garage because he's a cranky old stubborn man like all Sid should be. All Royal Arms speedrun? Yeah, you're talking to the world record holder for All Royal Arms level one Omega. It's actually it's actually cool. I um that route really kind of rode itself. Because the the first thing I really struggled with was getting the I believe it's the Mace of the Fierce up at Rabito, and the closest we get is in Chapter Three, 
We have just enough fuel to get there. And we can also get Ketty or Ginger there because I don't have the money to buy it at level one. So it actually, that 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 really routed itself and I've been working on refining it. I want to try and push it down to about like a 535 in the future, but that's going to require a lot of work. All right, so we are back at Hammerhead. We remember in chapter five, before the infiltration, we ate a very special meal. We have to eat this meal again. Uh, if I don't, the entire run basically collapses like a house of cards. Uh, so what we're going to do is the game at this point tells you basically blaring in your face. This is pretty much your last chance to grab items if you don't have Royal Edition. But basically, hey, if you're going to restock, you need to restock now or you're going to have to come back or time travel. Yep. yep. <clears throat> well, fellas. Anyway, last cutscene. We get a little sentimental. We catch up a little bit. Did not make the mistake. Let's go. We are basically about to about to hit the home stretch here. Um, Go I can ahead. read one more. Yeah, uh, you probably got two because basically all I have is movement until okay, I have yeah. the menu. Well, I have this one I'd love to read. We have a $250 donation from D last. Wow. Woo. Thank you so much. Um, Their comment. This run of FF15 was amazing. Hello, Ferret. Hello, Ferret. I like Ferret. She's Ferret's so sleepy. So cute. <clears throat> So our, cute, so nice. our morning ritual is I'll get up and throw sweatpants on and I'll saunter out to the I'll grab her cage, grab her from out of the cage, shove her in my my sweatpants pocket and then walk out and make tea. And she just kind of like wakes up and then oh, kind of noodles around in my pocket while I'm in the yeah. kitchen getting everything ready and making coffee for the wife. All right, so basically just movement tech here. I want to get to where we need to go as quickly as possible. Um, this is the big difference between Royal Royal Edition and the regular game. You do not get this in, in the regular version. Uh, you get a massively expanded Insomnia. Um, you get a bunch of side quests and extra missions here. Um, the bosses you fight also are completely different. Um, the any percent base game speedrun actually found a way to skip like two of the bosses, and the new game plus uh, run skips all of the bosses. Um, and this is going to be a pretty big menu, real quick. Uh, ascension. I'm going to get some very important abilities. Tech strike, which adds tech bar when I attack. Uh, regroup, which is just to unlock more stuff. Enhancement, which imbues Noctis's weapon with element the target is weak to. Super important. Uh, we also get change to Ignis, Dawn Hammer we don't use, Royal Guard we don't use, and then change to Gladio. Both of those are for better fights but later. I'm going to swap this for Ragnarok. Axe is going to get swapped out for the Dual Cast Lazaga. This is going to be Tech Turbocharger. Heliodor is fine. Magitech, Magitech. Uh, that didn't stick. This goes over to Enhancement, Magitech. That is it. That is all. I'm bringing my magic with me, and we're going to cause my system to almost crash. Okay, there we go. All right, everyone's back on board. So basically, this fight is just kind of mash and hope you don't get any weird angles. Uh, only one of those so far. I'm going to take a Magitech booster here to give myself, I think it's almost 30 seconds <coughs> of uh, basically zero MP cost. If I time this right, I will have just about zero MP by the time we are done. No, even quicker. Very quick second half there. Yeah. You are so you're saying that, and I'm watching it going, I think you're going to be good. Yeah. <clears throat> it is absolutely go big mode. I'm just excited that it, so I do the same strat for Ifrit that I do here in the level one run and uh, we literally go into oh wait we skip Ifrit now I totally forgot 
I, I don't do any of the final boss rush in level one because we don't have yeah. to. I just go right to Omega. But we it doesn't do matter. It I can the, tag it on uh, AP. Yeah, we go up AP to at least and road three the routes. But I've swapped back on our air step sword. Basically, this is just a ground and pound. Anytime I touch the ground, I'm going to jump and just keep warping forward. Uh, I just want to get through this as quickly as possible. Uh, how are we looking at time? 4.06. Oh, impressive. Time to beat is a 4.21.44. It's not going to happen. I was going to tell you right now, I lost way more than enough time uh, in Chapter 13 to, to make a problem of it. But if for some reason we somehow manage to get under a 4.21.44, this would be a PB. <laughs> somehow but let's get a move on our next goal is we're actually going to head back to the citadel now basically <clears throat> that is our last little bastion there and there are actually little like hidey holes uh core gave us a key uh there are like little places where we can catch a quick rest and or time travel in the city but we actually have access to buying items <laughs> and weapons in that little uh the the little king's guard like, I don't know if you want to call it like an enclave kind of a la fallout. Yeah. Oh, this is this has been great uh -huh. base for Marathon, Alec. I, uh, I'm hoping this this gets a bot or something because I wasn't able to record it. Because obviously the way we're doing this, it won't work. But uh, it's this has been probably one of the best marathon runs I have had of this in a while. I'm allowed to yawn. I've been talking nonstop for about four hours straight. All right, I'm going to swap this for Ragnarok. This is going to get swapped out for the Quint cast. And I'm going to make sure I have that equipped. This is Cerberus. It, is, it takes the place of the Behemoth King fight that we normally get. And I'm going to just go to Absolute Town here. It's going to stay there, and then I'm going to lock it in place uh, using... <clears throat> enhancement so it's now already almost halfway dead uh, the only thing I need to do is just avoid hitting its feet and avoid doing that okay good it sold me short last magitech booster here this is going to be a very quick Cerberus <clears throat> very clean. that's phase one done phase two coming in I don't care if I target defeat because we have the ability to just nuke it full of damage at this point I just need to keep an eye on where my MP is sitting and time these warp strikes so we don't miss too many of them. Stay. I am going to get a random summon here, but that magic is going to hit. And we're going to get through it. That's the end of Cerberus. That was insanely fast. Uh, this is going to get swapped out for Axe of the Conqueror. That can stay. This is going to be that, and we are ready to go for Ifrit. If you struggled with Ifrit, watch how we do this. Yeah, we're we are going into one of the one of the tougher boss fights without the without the suit, mainly because I need the crit damage. This is like super calculated. This is actually the oldest standing strat of uh of this this run this strategy was improvised i think at version 1.01 the game no longer has support and it hasn't changed it's just it just works that perfectly every time either way like the crazy thing is i can do all these fights without the magitech exosuit it's just a question of will i actually take damage at some Stay point cool. One day, I'll, I'll, yeah. one day I'll try and do a run without it and see how much time loss I actually have. It wouldn't surprise me if it was actually faster if it's a completely clean run. Uh, the reason that, that I keep defaulting to this outfit, uh, it doesn't explain it, but it actually gives us a little boost to strength and it also makes our crit rate 25%. So uh, I need them big crits. I'm a fan of big crits if you've got them. Also, yes, we're back at the opening cuts. Yeah, I reset, by the way. I wanted to be I hope, is everyone cool if I do another four and a half hours? There we go. Joke's about a reset. Hey, got the, got the crow hop. Perfect. All right. 
So even that wasn't enough. So don't take your eyes off the screen for too long. It's going to be time to take down Ifrit pretty much in one fell swoop. Pretty easy once you get the moves right. Once you get the timing, once you know the dance. Oh, wow. He, he way far away. He, uh, he decided to not go for the grab. There we go. And that's Ifrit done. Everyone say goodbye to Ifrit. It's a very difficult fight casually, but goodbye Ifrit. All right, now we have the final, final boss rush. I'm gonna swap over to the Trident. We're gonna be using that quite a bit. I also might pre-menu a few things here. Uh, I'm also gonna try something new that I've been working out that actually might save time. Leave that there. For That'll as long fun. as this game has been out and been actively run basically since release, we are still finding some new ideas. Some this new is just an optimization and kind of hedging things. bets, really. Yeah. Um, do it, I have? Do we have Kios tries a new strat on the bingo card? Somewhere. Okay. Toss that one on there. There are four cards. It takes me a minute. This is the Fierce, one of the previous kings. We are now tasked with fighting the previous kings of the Lusai. And I want to get his health down to around 75-ish uh, percent. This, this, yeah, that looks good. It's a little bit over. This is fine. And I'm going to bait him into a, uh, a parry and counter combo here. Actually, it looks like we don't. Wow. Wow. Maybe I thought it would be too obvious, but it's probably because I knew beforehand I was going to try this. Hi, I'm Kios. I try all of my new strats and marathons because I can't help myself. Uh, ooh, hidden high potion. Very nice. And I'm going to try and put as much damage into this guy as I can. And then I'm going to swap to Gladio really, really quickly here right before he can get this next. Uh, I want to get his HP down just like that. Perfect. Forces the cutscene. There is a weird chance my game is the only one that does this, probably because I've just played this game to absolute death. <coughs> um, but I'm going to try and mash triangle. Uh, sometimes I can get that quick time event twice, and I just unfortunately lose 30 seconds right at the end of the run for no reason. So, story-wise, we're fighting through a lot of the old keys. I got it. I got a warp. Cool. Yes. And we're about to meet one of everyone's least favorite kings, who's actually a queen. Uh, this next boss fight can take anywhere between two and a half minutes to six minutes. It just is what it is. I have no control over it. You are all going to suffer with me. Guess he's expecting this. This realistically could actually determine if I PB this run right now, which is silly. Sure looks like it. He is really taking. Save our legs to walk up. Yeah, these that's the Mace of the Fierce. Next, we're going to fight the Rogue, which is the star of the Rogue. I forget what the Mystic has. I forget. Don't ask me. Oh, Blade of the Mystic. It's the... Yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah. I, dude, my, my eventual goal is to get sub 420. That would put me within four minutes of world record. And the world record holder is a monster by the name of Yida Moda who at one point held all the world records in every category for Kingdom Hearts 3. If you watch Ida's um, world record hold, uh, run... It's in a marathon. It's in a marathon and actually in some ways would be considered Stay. invalidated because it does show off the use of the ring, but it's in a spot where it does not yeah, save or I lose it. time. It is completely a... Uh, Take, no matter what, it takes this amount of time kind of space. And because we were in a marathon, we were like, yeah, go ahead, show it off. Do you like how, you know, I'm not even going to say anything, but there is, oh, I shouldn't have I'm said not anything. paying attention to her for a reason. Oh, she's back already. This is, this is spicy. This is very, very spicy. If I can get her to stay in one spot and get this dual cast fire off, it'll transition to Prompto. Oh, she dodged me. But uh, yeah, this is so far a very, very good rogue. Even though she's flighty, this is like 
insanely good. We already have Prompto. Rogue. This is already over. So this is like Rogue a... likes to run off the screen, stay off the screen, and make you just suffer and wait. Until you get to Prompto. Uh, that is a, like a 245 rogue, might even be less. If that magic would have hit, we would have been talking potential gold split near sub 230 area. Right? Yeah, that was a very, very good rogue. She can literally, like I said, this fight can be two under two and a half minutes is my gold. The longest one I have on record is like about six minutes. It's bad. Yeah, it was a very, very good rogue. Those that watch my runs normally okay. know how painful it can be. Keep moving. I uh, okay. My last PB was two minutes up heading into Cerberus. I lost some time on my own. We were about a minute, a minute and a half up and then proceeded to only PB by 12 seconds or something stupid like that, 21 seconds. We're going to swap to Ignis here. Uh, the Mystic, thankfully, is weak to fire, and Ignis is basically an elemental blade expert now. Um, both of our fire casts hit, and I'm just basically what I'm going to do is try and build that total clarity bar and keep our damage multiplier as high as possible. Uh, the Mystic normally stays in place and doesn't really mess with me too much, but he's been a bit of a curmudgeon the past couple of attempts here. What's our time looking like? 417, 14. This has a chance to PB. <laughs> um... Something quick I just want to mention is that for uh, most of the run, you, you know, we don't really pay that much attention to what the other guys are wearing or doing or anything else. They just kind of exist in the space. For this boss rush, we actually do put them in like the Magitech suits because we need them to stay up. We don't want them to fall. We actively are swapping to them to make use of their different abilities, and different things and time. ways that we can gamble those together. And that's a lot of stuff that's really Stay. special to Royal Edition and this boss rush. I am coming out of this. That is basically a flawless mystic. I'm getting a better read. Um, no, he didn't decide to trigger ability early. So it's about a 419, 420? Uh, 419. Yep. Is is a uh, four? I thought you were saying four estimate four nineteen. No, you're at four nineteen. Uh, I don't think we have a PB in us. It'll be like a four twenty two though. I'm like it's gonna Maybe. be. It's gonna be close. close for a marathon run where I had to stop and grab pictures and made some mistakes while doing commentary. This is insanely fast. Mhm. Mm If I get an Arden that cooperates with me and doesn't death strike me, we're in decent shape. There is one final trick in this run. It is a glitch called advanced or uh, damage storage glitch. Um, basically, what's going to happen is I am going to set up um, a warp strike on Arden right before we transition out of his first phase. And then you're basically going to see me just, just basically warp strike and then just get oh, out sick. immediately um Can I see and photos? what this does is for oh. some reason the the multiplier yeah. uh oh picture one. should be Dude, take uh me. prompto oh yeah that's you mellow i get it i was muted <laughs> what is it is it prompto uh no it's iris Ugh. all right it's iris should be this family one. photo that the one you then it's settled. There we go. That's the one. <laughs> I no kept the count of which one it would be in my head. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm jazzed this run turned out so well. I really am. Like I am beyond ecstatic. I don't even care that Iris won. You know who the real winner is tonight? <laughs> me all right so yeah the, what happens with the extended or the uh the damage storage glitch is then it allows me to transfer my last warp strike from arden i forgot to do one thing that i always forget to do uh it's very important to this so i can get all the damage i need 
All right, let's see if we can get it. I'm going to get a summon instead. I hate you. Really? Yeah, it's fine. I have a decent setup here that I should be able to at least get one more warp strike in on him because it locks him in place. No, I'm just laughing about the summon, really. Okay, 2-5. It's not what I wanted. Generally, I go for like 3-1. Oh. Well, this may present a problem. I may not have damage storage, sadly. <clears throat> we'll, we'll find out. Yeah, it's very weird. That that animation shouldn't have happened. Nope, I still have it. 2.5, and basically I just want Arden to not attack me. Uh, we're basically in one hit kill shot. This looks really good. Okay, we almost got all of it. I'm going to continue on until I can get his HP a little bit lower, then I'm going to go aggressive. We are getting close on time. Yeah, we're, we're dangerously close here. Like, you have less than a minute. You have about 30 seconds as of right now, pretty much. Fourth to oblivion. All right, coming up on time very, very quickly. I only have, like, four more inputs. And... Time. That is how you would end. It was beautiful. So how do we do? Or twenty three oh nine. Ooh, just barely over twenty three. That was not bad for a marathon run. So that's that's literally a minute and almost two minutes faster than my PB at the start of last Monday. <laughs> GG's. No, Thank you, everyone, for hanging around. This is a great run. What? Um, I'm gonna grab the ferret real quick, the and then just let me know when I'm done. Erase me from his. So, Mello, it's all you. More. This time, you can rest oh. in peace. Well, first and Close foremost, Freya and I would like to thank. Forever. Freya and I would like to thank. The community, Final Fantasy 15 ESA for putting on a wonderful event. Oh, you're not going to bite anyone. Oh, you're so dangerous. You're yawning. You're not even biting. You're just yawning. Um, anyway, everyone that supported, been out, showed up. Uh, you are all terrific people. Thank you for donating your time, money, your energy to come and support uh, ESA and Alzheimer's funding. Um, big shout outs to Square Enix for making this wonderful game, which gave me an opportunity to really showcase my ability as a runner. Um, and hopefully going to continue to show this game off in other places. Uh, shout outs to commentary from Alfina and the standard community that hangs out with me on the daily. You all are terrific. Alfina, you got anyone to thank? Shout out. Uh, thank you for inviting me every time you get a run to come and talk about things. So this is farewell. Shout out to, to Dad, even though he's already gone to bed for Oh yeah, he long in bed. Best digs at you. It's all you. I got your belly. I got your belly. You don't you don't scare me with your And uh if we uh will give the a complaint about time loss to some of those minor things, we did actually get one bingo. Otherwise, none of them won one, by my One bingo? That's it. We only got one bingo. That's pretty pretty good though. All right, I'll uh, I'll shoot a donation in tomorrow. I gotta figure out someone I know is doing a run tomorrow, so I'll donate during their run. Tall, my friends. What you want the microphone? You want your own? You you gonna be the streamer now? Godspeed. And I can't wait care. until you grow up and chill out a little bit, and then we can be best buddies. Majesty. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, y'all. Well, we are going to check out and thank you again for having us. You all are super terrific. Freya, Andor, my wife. Myself, Kios Little Monster, bid you farewell. We hope to see you around at the marathon, as well as maybe swinging by and checking me out as well. 
Don't forget to give some love to our wonderful co-commentator, Alfina, and although they are not here tonight, Barbados00 also runs this game and is a fabulous, fabulous streamer and human as well. Be well.